And welcome to another edition of DeMatha Football here on DM Stags TV. This is DeMatha's fourth game of the season. My name is Eric Meyer. I am joined by the Hall of Famer, Corey Puffett, for another week of greatness here at and Marvin F. Wilson Stadium. Technically, as you can see on our splash screen here, we're 2-0, and so this is our third game of the season because we had a game last week. I was going to mention <laughs> the oddity of that. Yes, this is technically... No, it's the fourth game, but it's the <laughs> third time that hopefully we'll have a decision. Yes. Uh, last week's game ended in a no contest after multiple weather suspensions. Yes. Friday and, and On Saturday. two different days. In Virginia, our poor athletes had to go all the way down to Virginia a second time to play four more minutes of the game and still have it suspended before halftime. It's kind of unbelievable that they restarted <laughs> the game under those circumstances. Though. You would think that they would have seen that there might be something heading their way. It might not be worth it to start it just yet, but... Well, we've got a cloudless night here. So we should be good. So I think we'll be able to get this one in, in full. Here as DeMatha takes on Roman Catholic Varsity. Looking forward to this one. Yeah. Hopefully DeMatha can stay undefeated. Hopefully. Two undefeated teams coming in. Uh, you know, I've talked to a couple of uh, our coaches this week um, just to kind of get a sense of the teams that Roman Catholic has played against. And it sounds like the teams that they played against haven't been super competitive. But that Roman Catholic has shown some good things uh, while playing. We will pause briefly for the playing of the national anthem. And after that wonderful rendition of our national anthem by the Voices of DeMatha, we are just about ready to get started here. So, Corey, what are you expecting to see tonight? I know we've kind of mentioned Roman Catholics' competition maybe wasn't up to snuff for them. Do we have any idea where they thrive or what they do well? Honestly, not really. Okay, you know, so it's a mystery. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a little bit of a mystery. So it's, it's going to be really fun in this first quarter to – uh, kind of get a feel of what they do on offense. Um, yeah. Sorry, we got somebody coming up here trying to give us a note, but we are the, the TV broadcast. How yeah. you doing, Coach? <laughs> coach Turk is up here asking us why the flags are at half-mast, and I, I don't know. And honestly, they don't even look quite at half-mast, so um, yeah, it's a great quite, question. Like, one third mass to throw yeah. such a thing. In any case, uh, back on to your question, <laughs> it'll be very interesting to get a feel for them through the first quarter. I mean, there, that tends to be the case for a lot of the opponents that we play early in the season. Sure. You know, when we play our, our conference games, we tend to have a bit of an idea going into those games what teams do well, what they do poorly, what we can try and take advantage of. Um, with Roman Catholic, you know, this is not the same Roman Catholic that was on our schedule last season. Uh, that Roman Catholic is a team in Maryland. Uh, their nickname is the Crusaders. Uh, these guys' nickname, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, is the Cahillites, and they're from Pennsylvania. Okay, very interesting. Yeah, I tried to look up earlier this week what a Cahillite is. Couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you either. Maybe we'll find out later in the game from somebody who knows better. As it is, DeMatha is ready to kick the ball away to get us started here. Yeah, we're in our red uniforms today, so we'll see if this is any easier as the lights go on and the sun goes down to read their numbers because we definitely had some issues last uh, two weeks ago on the blue jerseys. It was a little tricky. And the kick is away. Short kick. Low kick. Fielded by the up man. Takes the ball 
and is tackled right around just past the 25 yard line. So decent field position starting for Roman Catholic here. Yep, number four, Jaw Jaw Boyd on that one. And uh, looks like we're having some issues with our scoreboard camera. So I'm going to run upstairs and take a quick look at that. All right, well, while Corey is doing that, I'll try to hold it down solo. So first and 10 for Roman Catholic at the 27. They come out in the shotgun formation. Three wide receivers, four wide receivers, I should say, on the field. Three stacked to the top. Snap is taken, ball's handed off, and it is a short carry up the middle, maybe a yard on that one. Right around the 28 was where the ball carrier was stopped, so it'll be a second and nine-ish in all likelihood. Looks like I short changed him. And a one yard gain, so we are on to second and nine here. Corey all right. is back. And we got the uh, the scoreboard back on, hopefully permanently. Uh, I appreciate you scrambling around a little bit because I had to scramble to get here as I was running from the parking lot. So it's a little bit of a frantic start, but we're used to that at this point. Right. Third down or second down pass over the middle. A little bit of miscommunication there. Looked like the receiver got caught up a little bit on the jam. Yeah, Samaj Beals looking at Jaja -Ja Boyd again. Uh, Boyd with the returner on the uh, opening kickoff. So now DeMatha has their first opportunity on third and long. Potentially could get off the field here, maybe make a big play. The student section was quite alive to start the game, by the way. I, I appreciated that. We've got a good student section. So three wide receivers set once again. Beals in the shotgun. Takes the snap, throws it again to Boyd, and he breaks through and is able to get to around the 45-yard line for a first down. A nice play there for Roman Catholic to move the chains when they were kind of up against it in the first series. Yeah, sends Boyd in motion, and I think DeMatha was expecting him in the slot to then run a more traditional route. Instead, he just stayed in the flat. A really nice quick throw with lots of space in front of him. He's able to get to the sideline, get up the field, and pick up a first down. A yeah, nice gain of about 14 yards on that one to move the chains. Beals once again in the shotgun. Tighter formation, three bunch to the t uh, bottom of the formation. And that is a quick screen pass caught and taken to around the 49 yard line for a nice gain on first down. Another quick throw to the flat. This time it's Taden Mines. Yes. So seems Roman Catholic trying to really focus on the short game here. You yeah, know, quick get passing game seems to be the, the theme early on. Yeah, get the ball out of your hands quickly. You know, that really uh, neutralizes the Stags' powerful defensive front that can definitely get after the quarterback. So far, pretty good blocking on the offensive line. Obviously, we, they haven't really been able to show it off yet. Another quick Another pass. Quick pass. This time, DeMatha is all over it as... Taden Mines is not able to gain any progress, loses a couple of yards, and that'll set up another third down opportunity for DeMatha's defense. Yeah, number 14, Terry Dorsey on that one just absolutely speared him. A great hit. So third and five coming up. Again, we've seen short passes. We'll see if they stick to that at this point. You gotta figure, probably, I mean, it's third manageable. No need to try to take a shot. Probably True, not, maybe not so much a shot, but at the same time, you know, I, look, I, I feel like that hit was a little bit of a statement from Dorsey saying, you've gotten us a few times in a row. We're not going to keep falling for it. So Beals takes the snap, hits a little slant pattern, and looks like DeMatha had a chance to, carry, uh, to corral the ball carry, but he slips through on the slant and gets inside the 40-yard line. Will be first and ten for Roman Catholic at the 39. So they Pretty did nice go with play. a quick pass, but instead of staying in the flat, throwing it near the line of scrimmage, uh, number 18, Jay Ford King, ran that nice quick slant route, got a little bit of space, and then made a nice move to slip one defender and get some extra yards after the catch. And they had a bunch formation on the right part of the formation there that created a little bit of traffic to help him ultimately spring free. Yeah, it's hard to keep track of everybody in a situation like that. And a run play that goes nowhere, maybe got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe lost a half a yard or so on the ball carry. Yeah. And DeMatha once again has Roman Catholic early in the down behind the chains. We'll see if this time maybe they can 
make a big play and get off the field. Yeah, nothing there for Deshaun Hopkins. Just ran into a wall at the line of scrimmage, and it looks like DeMath is going to call a timeout here. So we will take a quick pause from game action. Second and ten when we return. 8.21 to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, you know, we talked in the pregame. We didn't really know what to expect from Roman Catholic coming in, but so far very patient. Uh, you know, I, I've really liked uh, what I've seen so far from Samaj Beals out of the quarterback position. Yep. Um, you know, obviously he's getting the ball out of his hands quickly, but he's taking what the defense is giving him. And to me, that's, uh, that says that he's a patient guy in the pocket. Um, he feels comfortable um, with the offense that they're running. I'll be very interested to see if at some point in the game they're in a situation where they need to take some deep shots or maybe they just want to take some deep shots in order to open up some of those runs for Deshaun Hopkins. Part of the reason why DeMath was able to cover that run so easily is because Roman Catholic hasn't stretched the field at all on this drive. Okay, four wide receivers on the field. Beals takes the snap, a little bit of a low snap, and a handoff again for a carry about three-yard pickup to set up a third and seven or eight, depending on the spot. Looks like the ball's being spotted at the 37-yard line, so that'll set up a third and eight. For you mentioned the issue of taking a big shot down the field. That's something that definitely can be set up by the short passing game. DeMathic might get a little antsy. Oh, sure. Gun some things. So we'll see if that's in the playbook now or maybe later in the game. Yeah, I mean, you saw Terry Dorsey ready for that short pass uh, on second down a few plays ago, but the downside to that is that, you know, something over the top could definitely open up. And Beal goes down. He's able to get back to the line of scrimmage, but that'll set up a fourth down inside the 40-yard line. Sometimes this can be no man's land. We'll see what they decide to do. Looks like they're sending the punt unit on the field. Yeah, I think that's the right decision here. Obviously, yes, you know, you're in plus territory. You're within 40 yards. The punt is not going to get you great field position. If this was a fourth and two, fourth sure. and three, or even like a fourth and five, especially with the say, way yeah. that they've moved it, I, I would say it might be worth it to go ahead and kick the wheels and go for it. But fourth and eight and is just too much. We got a snap here on the punt, and a <laughs> not great punt as a result. The ball goes out of bounds right at the original line of scrimmage. I think he got about three yards. That was unfortunate. Um, I mean, at, at that point, obviously hindsight, you would say they should have just gone for it. Well, yeah, uh, it of was, course. It was, you don't imagine yeah. <laughs> that's going to happen, right? That's, no, That's an no. unfortunate play. Uh, impressive job to actually recover and get the foot on the ball. We remember Michigan and Michigan State Ooh. way back when when the punter tried to kick the ball after botching it, and that didn't end nearly did not as well, go well as this. And this did not go well. No, so, it didn't. All right, so DeMatha will take over. Great field position. Ball spotted at the 34-yard line. Yep. So. Good field position, even despite giving up a decent drive to the opponent and them deciding to punt. So demath has got to feel pretty good about where they're at right now. After this play, assuming we're not going in the hurry up, we can go through our offensive starters. All right, Denzel Gardner takes a snap, hands it off, and about a gain of two on Demath's first offensive play of the game. Yep. Before you mentioned yeah, so we can go through our offensive starters real quick. Uh, quarterback Denzel Gardner in his junior year. Uh, we've got our offensive line starting from the right side. Our right tackle is going to be Ashton Booker. Our right guard is going to be Nate Hampton. Center, Isaiah M uh, Minder. Right, uh, left guard is going to be Anthony Truman. And left tackle, Therese Davis. Go through the uh, skill position players in just a moment. And another run for Coombs up the middle. Nothing doing on that one. Maybe a gain of a yard. That'll set up a third and long for DeMatha here. Yep. Uh, Bud, our, oh, sorry. Our, uh, Bud is our starting running back. Uh, obviously broke a huge play on his first carry uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, wide receiver, we've got Cody Williams, Emmanuel Dyson, LeVar Keys, and Vincent Ordinez. So DeMatha in their passing down situation here has four wide receivers on the field. And there is a procedure penalty pre-snap. Looks like they're going to get DeMatha for, not sure what he said, no, but it's definitely on DeMatha. I assume it's a false start. Yeah. Regardless, uh, that'll march him back five yards, and it'll be third and 13. Yeah, so I, I didn't notice if uh, Mason Lindsay was on the field for the very first play. He comes back out off the field for, after that play. Uh, he was not listed as a starter uh, by our offensive coordinator earlier, but uh, was in for that play, and um, not sure if he was the one penalized or not. 
Pressure's coming, throws over the Ooh. middle, and just a little bit behind the receiver, and that's going to result in a punt. Yeah, that was, he was, uh, uh, yeah, he was targeting Emmanuel Dyson there, just a little bit behind him. Dyson couldn't make the adjustment. Good read, yeah, just not not well executed. A nice job staying in the pocket when the pressure was bearing down. The yeah. clock was going off in Denzel's head there, but just a little bit behind, and ultimately you just got to got to hit those windows. So far, the number's definitely easier to read tonight than they were two weeks ago. Oh, for sure. I'm not sure if I love <laughs> just how red these uniforms are, but they're, they're, they're easier to read. Yes, I, I agree with that part. So DeMatha will punt it away. And Ooh. A near block, maybe even got a piece of it. Short punt regardless, and Roman Catholic will take over right around the 43-yard line. Yeah, great job there by uh, Desmond Roberts, the linebacker for, uh, for Roman Catholic. Almost got there. Uh, just broke through the line unblocked. So after a pretty good drive for Roman Catholic the first go-round, they'll take over in pretty good field position here. We'll see if they're able to continue some of that momentum. Yeah, I mean, they had a really good drive going that first time through, just kind of ran into uh, a little bit of trouble as they got into DeMatha territory, and then obviously the really unfortunate punt. But because of the defense, they're able to salvage that and still end up with pretty good field position, all told, on this drive. So DeMatha continues to stifle Roman Catholic's running game. That's another loss on first down for them. Yeah, nothing there for Deshaun Hopkins. At some point, they're probably going to have to start, as we said in the first drive, stretching the field to try and open up some of that running space. Yep. Deshaun Hopkins looks like he's got a bit of shiftiness to him, but he hasn't had an opportunity to show us just how much yet. So three wide receivers to the left here. Beals takes the ball, play action fake, and a screen pass, and the ball carrier is able to slip past a couple of would-be tacklers and turn it into a nice game. That play looked like it could have easily been blown up. Yeah, that was Terry Dorsey, number 14, who was, who was there and just missed the hit. And uh, number 18, Jay Ford King, was able to slip by him and pick up at least a couple of yards. It is still third and long. So third and seven coming up. About a five-yard gain on that play. Keeps keeps them somewhat on schedule. Gives them an opportunity to maybe move the chains here. Three wide receivers on the field, or four wide receivers, I should say. They kind of blend in. And that is, ooh, double coverage pass. Dangerous throw. Could have easily been picked off. It goes incomplete. The target on that was Amir Nuswan. And DeMatha is able to force a three and out right after the somewhat disappointing drive on their end. They get the offense right back on the field. Yeah, no, I mean, honestly, all told, a pretty solid accuracy on that throw because, like you said, Terry Dorsey was right there yep. underneath the ball, and it was just a little too tall for him. He got it up over him. Pretty close to being a catch by Zamir Nuswan, but Even nothing with the doing. There, there was it was going to be right short, there, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, double coverage. You know, somebody can go and try and undercut the ball while somebody else handles the coverage and gets ready for the tackle if, yep. if necessary. So our third punt of the day, another low snap. This time handled a little bit better by the punter, and he's able to get away a much more effective kick. Fair caught at around the 22-yard line for DeMatha, where they will take over for their second offensive drive. We've got 4.19 to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, qu pretty quick moving quarter here. Yep. You know, a lot of running and a lot of short passes that are going to keep the clock moving, which is nice. We always yep. appreciate that, especially if it's going to be a low-scoring game, which, you know, all indications through these first uh, three possessions would suggest that it might be. We'll see what DeMatha can do on their second drive. So DeMatha's offense returns to the field. They'll take over at their own 23-yard line. Gardner in the shotgun per usual. Bud Coombs flanking him and now moving to his right. Takes the snap, drops back, looking outside. Hits Coombs in the flat for a nice gain on first down. That should become a chain-moving situation here. Looked like he should have gotten around the 33 or 34-yard line where he went out of bounds. Really nice protection by the offensive line there. Kept the right side of, uh, of the um, pocket open for uh, Gardner to find Coombs. Just a little up-and-out route out of the backfield. Got out into the flat yep. for a nice, uh, nice gain in first down. Gardner once again in the shotgun. Takes snap, snap is over his head, and it is loose inside the 15-yard line. DeMatha is able to fall on it, but a very dangerous, potentially ruinous play for this drive. Fortunately, DeMatha is able to avoid the turnover. And that was Bud Coombs, who was very aware, ready to get back there. And uh, now we've seen, you know, we've seen a couple of bad snaps 
on Roman Catholic side, both on uh, punts. Now we see a really bad snap by DeMatha that's going to kill them in the field position battle if they can't somehow pull something out here. They got a long way to go. They got almost 20 yards just to get to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, it's going to be about second and 29 here. So uh, quite an adventure to pick this one up. We'll see if they're able to make any headway on this uh, play here on second down. Throw once again out into the flat. And it's going to be a pretty nice gain after the receivers able to slip a couple of tacklers. That was Vincent Ordinez yeah. making something out of nothing there to give DeMatha a little bit of a shot here to maybe pick this up. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the danger of playing a soft co uh, coverage in that situation. You figure, okay, you know, we want to give the underneath stuff. We want to make sure we protect against the deep shot. We've got plenty of space to allow a small pickup. The problem is... If you have a lot of space and you can get the ball out to your receiver quickly, he has the opportunity to try and make a move on the defender, and Vincent did there. The Gardner takes a snap, looking over the middle of the field, starts to scramble, is moving around, trying to make something happen here on third down, and he escapes a sack and then can't escape the second pass rusher. He's taken down around the 16-yard line. That's going to be fourth and long. DeMath is going to have to punt. I didn't see who ultimately got the sack, but that was Will Felder, number seven, who lost his helmet on the initial hit trying to take Gardner down. At some point, I mean, you get outside the pocket if you're Denzel. You just got to throw it away. You got to see you've got three or four defenders crashing down on you. You're not going to be able to get the ball out. Yeah, and you're about 25 yards away from the line to gain. Yeah. Probably and, not going to pick it up. And, so. you know, they're not quite as far back as they were on second down, but they're only a few yards ahead. <laughs> so really uh, awful sequence there for DeMatha and really losing the field position battle at this point. So DeMatha will punt it away. Decent kick. Lands right around the 47 and is picked up at the other 47. After a nice DeMatha bounce. And now, Roman Catholic will take over to start their, they'll have their first starting point of the drive be in DeMatha territory. Yeah, which obviously is good for them. But, you know, considering how bad the field position was, that was a pretty good punt by Micah Ve yeah. uh, Veyu. If DeMatha's defense can continue to fire like they had the last few plays, they might be able to get off the field and mitigate the damage. Somebody bumped the uh, scoreboard, so give me one set. Corey is once again having to handle technical issues. Beals in the shotgun once again, four wide receivers on the field. Takes the snap, looks to his left. And scrambles out to his right, and he's got room to run here. He slides down right outside the 40-yard line, getting about half the yards you needed for the first down. Probably going to be around second and six, depending on the spot. The ball is placed at the 42-yard line, so a five-yard gain on first down. And uh, again, sort of have been a recurring thing for Roman, Cat Roman Catholic, steadily picking up five, six, seven yards at a time. Haven't seen them take a big play shot yet. We'll see if that's in the bag or if they'll continue to try to methodically move down the field. Beal sends his man in motion. Takes a snap. Run to the short side here, and DeMatha once again is all over it. Gang tackle for a huge loss there, almost pushing Roman Catholic back to the original line of scrimmage, and they're going to have a third and long. After a nice gain on first down, that follow-up play definitely was not what they were looking for, and it'll be third and about ten. Roman Catholic looking to the sidelines for direction from the coaching staff. Beal sets up once again in the shotgun. Tailback flanking him to his right. Four wide receivers on the field, three to the high side of the formation. Takes the snap, looks over the middle of the field, and he has a receiver, Ooh. and that was a fantastic throw, and looks like DeMath is going to tack on 15 for maybe a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit or a defenseless receiver, but what a great throw in that situation, and the penalty is just going to add more damage to it. Yeah, if you're Roman Catholic, you love that play call. Just ran that seam route really nicely. That was Taden Mines who just got up field and a really terrific throw to keep it underneath of, I believe it was the linebacker who was trying to get over there into coverage because the safeties were still over top. Yep. Some convening from the officials to determine the penalty. We will await the call.
Well, the ball seems to be spotted where the tackle was made at the time. So. Well, they're still going to walk it off in a moment. So okay. uh, definitely some sort of, a, of an uh, unnecessary roughness penalty on DeMatha. So at the 25, that's going to be a half the distance penalty up to the 12 and a half yard line. So the, our first red zone plays of the game here for Roman Catholic. Looks like they went ahead and just spotted it right at the 13. Fields takes a snap, throws a fade to the corner, and it is incomplete. I like the throw, but great coverage there by Dante Jackson. That was sort of the first thing we could say was a bit of a shot play, although I guess last play down the field was pretty good too. Yeah, I mean, the last play was a nice play, but that, I wouldn't call that a shot play. You know, long, for, yeah. me, for me, a shot play, well, it, A, it's third and long, and so obviously you have to try and push the ball downfield. But to me, a shot play is somewhere you're trying to put it up over top of the, yeah. def of the defense. He still, everybody. Yeah, he still kept that underneath the safeties on that seam route. This one, just a really nice fade, and I mean, it was a well-placed ball, just great coverage. Roman Catholic in a bunch to the right of the formation. Beals takes the snap, hands it off, and again, not much doing on the ground for Roman Catholic as DeMatha swallows them up pretty quickly, and that's going to set up, once again, third and ten. Yeah, I mean, when you wait to take the shot play when you're in the end zone, or in the red zone anyway, you know, defense, you're still going to have a little bit of pressure up front because you don't have as much space to defend. It also gets crowded down in the box here in this situation. There's only so much turf that the defense has to cover at this point, so the precision has to be on point. And the best, the best antidote to a red zone defense is being able to run the ball. And that takes us to the end of the first quarter. It'll be third and ten when we return. It'll be a pretty hefty march to the opposite side of the field here. But Roman Catholic will have a red zone opportunity to potentially put six on the board or maybe even get a field goal. We'll see how it plays out. So on Fridays uh, in video broadcast journalism, uh, a lot of times, especially during football season, we have uh, we have a couple of football players who obviously can't work during the games, and so we try and get a little bit of information from them. And sometimes we have a coach who might come up. So. Uh, uh, Marvin Brown came up, uh, our, uh, I believe he's our running backs coach uh, this year. I know he has been our, uh, yeah, he's a running backs and special teams coordinator. So he came up uh, during class today, and they were running through some, uh, some discussions of offensive line movements. Uh, Anthony Chuman and, uh, and Nate Hampton are both in that class, both starting offensive linemen for the Stags. Uh, so that was really fun, talking about uh, basically Bill Belichick's old adage, do your job. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing because, you know, the coaches have uh, control of the big picture. They know what, what they need. You just got to make sure you block the guy you're supposed to block. That adage has worked out quite well for Coach Belichick, so yeah. applying that. So far, the, the offensive line has not been great for the Stags. I've seen a couple of plays where they had really good protection for Denzel, but obviously on that last play, it completely broke down. Quick throw out to the flat here on third and ten, and a nice move to cut back inside, and that's going to be a touchdown for Roman Catholic to open the scoring here early in the second quarter. He's been able to do absolutely nothing running the ball, but as soon as they get Deshaun Hopkins out in the flat, he makes a really nice move and shows that shiftiness that I thought might be there that we just hadn't seen. Really nice cut to get up into the end zone. We do have a flag on the play. We'll see what the officials have. We've got, oh, like that's unfortunate. Back, so that play's coming back. Fortunate for the Stags, sure. unfortunate for uh, for Roman Catholic, who had a really nice play there. Hard to say where they're going to spot the ball because it looked like it was a little bit downfield. But regardless, it's going to be third and long again for Roman Catholic. I didn't most get most importantly, it. it takes the touchdown off the board. Yeah, I didn't get a great look at it. Um, it definitely looked like there could have been some contact that caused our our cornerback to miss on that tackle. I wasn't, I'm not sure if that's what they called or if it was somewhere else on the field. And this time, a miscommunication almost leads to an interception, and there was nothing but daylight there. Yeah, Deshaun Hopkins had his touchdown taken off the board, so they would try to go right back to him, but he never turned his head to look for the ball, and it just sailed wide, thankfully sailed wide, because there was a defender ready to pick it off if it had been yeah. about two feet to the left. Like I said, nobody was home back there. He would have been making a house call the other way. So we will see, I assume, the field goal unit, although it looks like the offense might be staying on the field for fourth down here. 
fourth and 17, kind of a surprise, but. Yeah, I see two kickers uh, listed on, on their roster. Uh, Dan and LaRusso as a cornerback and a corner and a, a cornerback and a kicker. And then Chris Whittle is a kicker, but uh, I don't know what their what their range is, or well, if they just feel like they need the down, touchdown. Sail to the end zone and broken up. Demathel will take over. I'm assuming no flag. Oh, there's a late. Oh no, that was the ref throwing the ball. I don't know what that was. It was not a flag. So Cody Williams breaks up the play. That's a turnover on downs. Demathel will survive that drive after it looked like they were about to give up a touchdown, and now they will take over on downs, having surrendered no points. Yeah, I mean, I didn't see anything there that constituted a flag. No, I, I, I thought that the time, I thought it was timed ball. really well. I got confused by the guy throwing a football. Got it. Like, he looked like yeah, because it, it looks like really good timing there on the defense. I think that may have been number 18, Laurel Sharp, on the coverage. I know he's a line. Williams oh, it was, it was Cody. Okay. Yeah. Regardless, great play by DeMatha, and I agree he was right on time. Yeah, Cody, a really good two-way player, plays uh, cornerback and wide receiver. We'll probably see a few targets his way at some point here today. I haven't seen anything yet. So Gardner takes the snap, hands it off, and looked like, oh, ball Ooh, is Yeah, out. they're reacting like the ball came out. I thought I might have seen it pop out as Roman he was Catholic going down. He's sure that they have it, waiting for the ref's signal. And a flag just There's came flag out. Coming. So we'll see what the flag is. It looked like it happened well after the play, so it shouldn't affect who gained possession here. Still waiting for the ref's signal. It looked like Roman Catholic recovered the fumble. Yeah, well, I mean, DeMath has already sent their defense yeah. back out there, so they know that they lost the ball. DeMath is just killing themselves with negative plays and, and now a turnover. So far, the defense has done a really good job to keep control of things, but at some point, you know, you keep giving Roman Catholic red zone or near red zone possessions, you know, they're going to get into the end zone. So we had a personal foul against DeMatha after the play. So, so another half the distance. Yep, so that'll march Roman Catholic right back into the red zone. Inside the 10, in fact. Yep. So a great starting field position. So Roman Catholic starts spread out wide. Four wide receivers on the field here. Fields takes the snap, looks to his right, throws it over the middle, and gets a little bit of a nice gain there, right around the five-yard line uh, to set up a second and goal from around the five. That's where the ball has been spotted. Yeah, Tayden Mines on the catch. Here, and DeMatha does not get their guys off the field here. The refs blow the play dead. We'll see. It's a timeout called before the penalty could be achieved. Yeah, at that point you had to call the timeout. I'm very curious about what happened there because I, I don't know if the high school rule is different than in the NFL, although nobody subbed in for Roman Catholic, right. so this isn't a situation where so you have to give the yeah. defense a chance to sub. So you have to be more aware if you're the Stags and see that they're not subbing. They are going back to the line of scrimmage and, and, and trying to run you know, a quick play. You cannot, in that situation, Pull Laurel Sharp off the field. Yeah, there's a little bit of chaos there. And a smart move to call a timeout to spare the penalty. Yeah, because Roman Catholic was on play. it. They were ready. They were ready to snap it. It would have been second and then goal at about the three-yard line if they had gotten that off. Not to mention the free play opportunity that would have come with it as well. Yeah, yep. So DeMatha has now called two of their three timeouts with 11 minutes to go here in the second quarter. Obviously not the ideal situation for them. No, but at the same time, you know, if you're going to have to burn early timeouts, you'd rather be in the first half than sure. the second half. So Beals takes the snap, looks to his left, fires, and throws into traffic again. Very dangerous throw there targeting Trey Woodley. Two stags converged on the ball. In some ways, he might have been lucky at the double coverage because I think the, the two uh, defenders interfered with each other being yeah. able to catch it. That may have been a pick if only one of the two had been there. So two out of Beal's last three throws have been a little dangerous. We'll see what they have to bring here on third and goal from the five. Four wide receivers on the field once again. Beal in the shotgun. Takes the snap, looks to his right, throws it, and throws it behind his receiver once again. 
And that's going to bring up fourth down and goal. I have to imagine they're going to leave the offense on the field here if they did last time when it was fourth and seven. Yeah, Samaj Beals reached back, tried to get it. I think he tried to tip it to himself. He's lucky there wasn't a defender further back. That could have been a situation like uh, – uh, who was it for the Eagles who had that pick six against the Patriots last week in week one? Darius Slay. Yeah, Darius Slay had the uh, the pick six on the tipped pass. Oh, the field goal unit is on the field here. A little bit closer here, so perhaps a belief that this can be converted. Yeah, this one's Dan and LaRusso. Or, or yeah, LaRusso. High snap. Kick is up and looks like it is yeah. good. So it will be three nothing Roman Catholic. So they do have a kicker who can put it through the uprights. That you know might call into question their decision to go for it on fourth down on their last red zone possession. But in any case, they have a three nothing lead inside of 11 minutes in the half. Maybe the previous decision kind of gave them cold feet this time. Yeah, and, and it also may just be that they're seeing that you know Demath is having a lot of trouble moving the ball, and so you got to take some points yeah, because points you know yeah. I have faith that DeMatha can get things going on offense. You know, we've got too many skilled players on that side of the ball. But Roman Catholic, if they feel really confident in their defense, and so far they have no reason not to be, they could feel like a field goal could be the difference. I wonder if uh, Dan and LaRusso likes him some Cobra Kai. <laughs> it's not Daniel. It's close. It's close. It's close, but it's not Daniel. I'm sure he's heard it before, and he probably hates it, so I won't do it again. <laughs> So 10.57 to go here in the second quarter. DeMatha will receive the kickoff after the successful short drive for Roman Catholic, giving them a 3-0 lead. And the kick is away. Another short kick. More hang time that time. Yeah, taken about around the 20. It's a nice stiff arm Ooh. and then a big hit. That but looked like both players lowered their helmets. Yeah, there could have been some laundry on the field after that one. And after all that, it was maybe a four-yard pickup on yeah. after the catch. Hard to tell from this angle. It looks like it may have been helmet to shoulder pad on both sides, but it was close. <laughs> Refs decide play on. Yeah. So it'll be first and goal, or first and ten, I should say. We're a long way from first yeah. and goal, Eric. <laughs> first and goal from 77 yards away would be quite something. That probably wouldn't be a good thing. That would be a really bad thing <laughs> if it's first and goal from this far away. It's a lot of penalties. Gardner takes the first down snap, and we've got a procedure penalty here. Looks like an encroachment here, or an offsides, or neutral zone infraction, or whatever they choose to call it. Yeah. Regardless, it's five yards for DeMatha, so it'll be first and five here from the 28-yard line. Yeah, not your traditional offside, but you know something where it's still a dead ball penalty. Uh, somebody on DeMatha's offensive line must have moved in reaction, but uh, they'll get five free yards. So they'll reset here at the 28. Gardner once again in the shotgun. Switching up the defense. Handoff up the middle here. Yeah, this one is Elijah, Elijah Lee. Elijah Lee on the ball yep. carry that time. He picks up maybe a couple of yards to set up a second and short here. Elijah ball spotted at, right at the 30-yard line. Yeah, not a whole lot there. Picked, a, picked up a couple yards. So second and short coming up here for DeMatha. We've got... Yeah, officials. having an issue getting, yeah, they, they didn't move the stick to indicate second down. It was a one-yard gain. Okay, yeah. well One-yard gain after the penalty to set up first and, four, and five. Yeah. Now it's second and four. And the sticks have been properly moved, I, I hope. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what's going on down there on the sideline, but they're still talking. I don't know if somebody was stepping on the chain, uh, players maybe, players and or coaches maybe standing too close to uh, to the field of play, and interfering with the chain gang. But something happened to prevent them from well, doing the what they needed to do. Reset. Yep. After all of that, 
we play football. Yep. Game clock is running. Gardner takes a snap. Play action fake looking down the field. And he's on the run again. This time he's able to escape, and he takes a big shot. Yeah. He tumbled forward there at the end. I wasn't sure where he went out of bounds. The math of bench has kind of stood up right there. Yeah, and based on where the, the where the referee came up, it looks like they're going to give him the first down. Do yeah. his best uh, Dak Prescott impression there on those pump fakes. Oh, yeah. The hips turned and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so it is the first down for DeMatha. It looks like they, they wound the clock, so they determined he did not go out of bounds. Today I learned that that goofy pregame warm-up actually might have a use in a game. <laughs> Get you stretched out, man. you got to be ready to go. Gardner sends a man in motion, hands it off, another run up the middle, and this one is stuffed for about a one-yard pickup here. Yeah, neither team able to get a whole lot going on the ground. Elijah Lee again with the carry, picked up maybe two yards. Looks like he gave him one on the Yeah. Field. Yeah, Roman Catholic is doing a really nice job of controlling the line of scrimmage. Honestly, on both sides of the ball, they're not giving DeMatha a whole lot of room to work in the backfield when they're on offense, and they're not giving them any holes to run through uh, on the other side. And once again, Case another, in point. another run, and it's another quick tackle. Yeah, I don't have a number five on my roster for a Roman Catholic, so uh, sorry to, the, to that young man, because I was ready to give him a shout out. That was a really nice play. Bit of a generous spot. In my opinion, I agree. It looks like he yard when it looked like he didn't gain anything. Right. It looked like the wrap up was in the backfield, and with the fall four, they may have gotten back to that line of scrimmage. Gave him a full extra yard. So uh, Demetha will take it here on third and eight. Gardner takes the snap, looks to his left, throws the ball down the field, back shoulder pass, and oh. it is incomplete. Looked like they had a shot at a big play there, but. Just couldn't quite bring it in. Yeah, good target. They were going for Vincent Ordinez, but Mikey Preston with a really nice defensive play just draped all over him, timed it well, got his hand up in there. I mean, Vincent did a nice job to adjust to it. He got both hands on the ball, but just a really nice swipe with the hand by yeah, Preston. That adjustment, that was what I thought was going to help him bring that ball in. But yeah, nice play by the DB to finish the play and not let him make the catch. So DeMatha will once again send the punting unit onto the field. Taden Mines back to return. The snap is away. Pretty lengthy punt, but not too high. Received yeah. right around the 34-yard line. Mines is tackled pretty quickly. Great coverage by DeMatha to get downfield. That looked like that could have been an opportunity to really flip the field, and DeMatha was able to snuff it out and take him down right around the 36-yard line. Yeah, a couple guys involved in that tackle. Looked like Tyler Faison was the one to clean it up and get him down. We've got laundry on the field once again. We'll see what this is about. This may be moving that spot even further back. Looks like an illegal block. Yep, so yep. that's going to ultimately turn that into an excellent punt. As the ball should be spotted probably around the 25-yard 20, line, 26-yard line is the new spot. Yeah, Demath has had two or three of those 15-yarders. Uh, so nice for them to see one go against Roman Catholic. Yes. Fields takes the snap on first down, hands it off, and this time a little bit more push from that offensive line. He's able to pick up a couple yards, but once again, DeMatha's run defense has been quite effective so far today. Yeah, for as good as the pass blocking has been, they haven't been able to get any push in the run game. I'm wondering how many more of these runs they're gonna try, because at some point you really need to start. I mean, if you're not gonna take the shot play to try and open up the run, just keep doing what's been working for you, which is that short, quick pass game. Fields drops a oh. screen pass, and that play looked that good was from the start, but another huge play to blow that play up. Yeah, uh, Sean uh, uh, Zakruski uh, was running down the field along with Deshaun Hopkins. Hopkins had to reach back over his offensive lineman just to haul that in and, uh, and prevent a really dangerous play. So now it will be third and ten. The ball is right around the original line of scrimmage after the punt. Honestly, it felt like they were far enough down the field that that could have been a uh, 
uh, illegal man downfield. And nice job finishing that play with an open field tackle to not allow any extra yardage there and get off the field for DeMatha. Yeah, Jermaine Minnis, a linebacker for the Stags, was able to get enough of the receiver's jersey to uh, keep him from getting away. Uh, tripped him up and got him to the ground. So a short-lived drive for Roman Catholic. They will punt the ball away as we are about to get inside six minutes here in the second quarter. Low scoring defensive battle tonight. It's been kind of fun to watch, honestly. Yeah, I, I, I like seeing... It's not fun as a DeMatha fan. You want to see them score a lot of points. Sure. But this has been some entertaining football. Uh, if you if you enjoy defense, if you enjoy offense, maybe not so much. A high but short punt, but takes a very favorable bounce for Roman Catholic, and it rolls right around the 27 is where it's ultimately downed. So that'll yeah. flip the field. Nothing you can do there if you're LeVar Keys. I mean, the ball just it fell way too short. You were not going to make it up there to try and field that, so you just have to live with Yeah, you just got to tell everybody bounce. to get away because yeah. the worst thing you can have is an unfortunate turnover. Yes. So DeMatha's offense will once again try to find their mojo and get down the field and get some points on the board here. 5.36 to go here in the second quarter. Four wide receivers on the field for DeMatha. Gardner once again in the backfield. Takes a snap, drops back to pass, gets hit as he throws, and the ball sails out of bounds and incomplete. Yeah, well First wide down. of his intended receiver, uh, Emmanuel Dyson. We've seen that a couple of times today, the two of them not quite able to hook up. First time was too far behind Dyson, this time too far out in front and out of bounds. So it'll be second and 10 at the 27 yard line for DeMatha. Trying to get something going here before the half. Try to get on the board. Four wide receivers on the field once again. Love to see a little bubble screen here from the Stags. Gardner takes a snap, he's looking over the middle and he is wrangled and taken down for a big loss on second down. And that's gonna set up a third and probably 15 Probably third and 17 based on that spot, right around the 20-yard line. If I got the number right, that was uh, Josiah Simmons, a linebacker for Roman Catholic coming in on the blitz. So two straight pass plays to start this drive, uh, an incompletion with a lot of pressure, and then a big sack. So DeMatha once again is behind the chains here. Here on third down, four wide receivers on the field. Offsides potentially, maybe no flag from what I see, and that ball is just... No, I, I, caught, yeah, I think Dyson caught that. But he's well short of the first down. Just got uh, some clarity on the flags from Coach Turk. Uh, text me, let me know. It is prisoner of war slash missing in action remembrance day. Okay. So that is why the flags are at half mast. Oh, it's fourth and short. I, I was... I was not yeah, looking no, at the Dice, Dyson got close. He wasn't quite there. So DeMatha will leave the offense on the field. They'll hand it off, and that play is blown yeah. up in the backfield. Really Did hard he, to see. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think he, he fell it. forward enough. He, he tried to fall forward, but it looked like they were able to kind of keep him sideways, and he, he just couldn't get there. And that's going to be a turnover on downs for DeMatha in their own territory, setting up Roman Catholic with an opportunity to add to their lead here with just under five minutes to go here in the second quarter. Were you surprised by that decision to go for it there? Yes and no. When you're having as much difficulty as you are on offense, when you're in a situation where you're only a yard away, and most of your runs, they haven't gone very far, but they've gotten a yard, I can understand the decision, but obviously risky when you're in your own half of the field, especially when you're close to your own 30-yard line. So a quick hitter here for a couple-yard gain here on first down. Tight end Luke Van Brill on that reception. Roman Catholic running hurry up here. Beal looking to his right, and he gets hit as he throws, almost taken down for a sack. And that'll set up a third and eight. So the, the quick pace here is sort of working in DeMatha's favor if they want to get the ball back here after a, a quick completion, then a hurry up, and then an incompletion stops the clock with 4.22 to go. Dangerous decision there to actually throw the ball toward Deshaun Hopkins just because of how shallow that route was. You know, if that hit affects the throw in such a way that it goes laterally or backwards, it's a fumble. Yep. Here comes the rush. 
Beals is able to escape outside, throws over the middle, an unsuspecting receiver there. Yeah, it was like Samir Nuswan. Wasn't quite ready for the ball there. And so a quick three and out after the turnover on downs. This is a defensive battle for sure. Like, what else can you say? Like, normally in a situation like that where you take over at around the 37-yard line and plus territory, you're figuring it's time to score. But lightning quick three and out. Like, 27 seconds came off the clock. Yeah, after that first drive where Roman Catholic really was, you know, moving the ball almost at will for about 50, you know, 40 or 50 yards, DeMatha's defense has really tightened down. The only reason that Roman Catholic is winning 3 nothing right now is because they've had so many short fields. Oh, here comes the – oh, nope, he kicked it. I always get deceived a little bit by the running punt start. That's a terrific punt right there and yep. a really good play because as soon as he starts running, the uh, the return man, it looked like bit just a little yeah, bit, started moving yeah. forward, and that gave him some space to put the ball over his head and then lets it roll, and, a, and it also gives your, your gunners time to get downfield so that if you accidentally kick it too long, they can hopefully cut it before it gets uh, into the end zone. And so DeMath will have to go 95 yards or 94 yards here. In four minutes and six seconds. They have not had much success all evening on offense. So quite a tall order here if they want to score a touchdown. They'll start with four wide receivers on the field once again. Gardner in the shotgun. He comes to the line of scrimmage. Looks over the defense. Takes the snap. Hands it off. Outside run here. And once again, Roman Catholic is all over. They swarm to the ball carrier. There's Remy Robinson on the ball carry. And yeah, third. Now the third running back to come into the game for the Stags. And while I, you know, they do like to uh, rotate in a lot of running backs over the course of a game. I'm surprised that Bud Coombs is taking this many offensive possessions off the field. Clock continues to tick here. 3.35 to go. I see him down the sideline. He's walking around. Doesn't look like there's anything, you know, even potentially wrong. But they're going to keep Remy Robinson in for this next play. Runner takes a snap again. Another run up the middle. Actually, that was not Robinson. No, it was not. My apologies. That was uh, Elijah Lee back in the game. Couple yard pick up there. About four or five yards to set up third and five. And yet Remy, Rom Remy was on the field for that play, but did not carry the ball. He checks out for this third down. Clock continues to run here. DeMatha doesn't seem to be in much of a hurry. Gardner takes the snap, looking to his Got to get rid of it. Throws it down the field. And way too way far. Way too far down the field. Not a whole lot doing down the field for DeMatha's passing game so far tonight. Couple of receivers in the area. I think Cody Williams was his target. So DeMatha will have to punt it back to Roman Catholic after their version of a very short three and out. Yeah, and Veyu is going to have to do it from his own end zone. About three yards deep. Return man for Roman Catholics posting up right around the 42-yard line. So anticipating good field position once again for Roman Catholic. And plenty of time to do something with it. Yep. Punt is away. Ball is fielded at the 40-yard line. Nice return here to take the ball, tackled right around the 25-yard line. Pretty good punt, got it 40 yards roughly from where his foot made contact with the ball. Yep. Got a little bit less hang time than you maybe would have wanted to. Gave him a little bit of time, a little bit of room to run. Yeah, Tate and mine showed some good speed and some good burst there to yeah. take advantage of the opportunity to get upfield. Yep, picked up 15 yards on that return. So a bit of a crowded backfield here for. Yeah, Luke Van Brill, the tight end, is joining Deshaun Hopkins in the backfield. And that play does not go very far. DeMatha is able to rally to the football quickly, make a tackle for a loss here. And actually, I'm not sure if that was Deshaun Watson or Hopkins. It looked like that. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like that was Xavier Kincaid, number 30, who uh, may have handled that carry. I hope it's not Deshaun Watson. No, it's not no, Deshaun Watson. For a lot of reasons. Uh, another, 
Another throw outside here, and DeMatha rallied to the football but didn't quite corral the ball carrier, and he's able to score through for a few extra yards there. It looked like it could have been a big loss on the play. Yeah, he it looks might like have battled back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it looks like they're going to set themselves up for a maybe back, yeah, back around the original line of scrimmage. Um, not a great throw there. Uh, got his man Kincaid turned around on the pass and did not allow him to get any vision on where he needed to move to cut up field. Goes once again, takes the snap, throws to his left. And two DeMatha Stags are able to get to him. It depends on the spot there. I think they might give it to him. He was right there at the line to gain. That was Luke Van Brill, the tight end. Looks like bit they're signaling first down. Yeah. The chains are going to move. Yeah. So with 108 to go and the clock running here, Roman Catholic's got all three timeouts, but not in a huge hurry to use them since they're so close to the end zone. They can use them at their leisure. It's one of the situations where, you know, if it's third and 10 and they get right to the line, they're usually just going to go ahead and give it to them. You know, if you're the defense, you got to do a better job. Nice Whoa. catch there. <laughs> not a very good throw on the little out. Uh, into the flat pass. And not a wise catch because he lost about five or six yards on the play, but it's still an impressive grab. Your, your instincts <laughs> are always to catch the ball. I just, <laughs> yes, I feel they like are. Telling a, telling a receiver, hey, you need to drop this one, buddy, because you're about to lose a couple of yards. Yeah. So Roman Catholic is going to call a timeout here with 30 seconds left in the half to talk this over, try and figure out what they need to do to at least get a, uh, a little bit closer, set themselves up for a, for a chip shot field goal. We saw a nice kick by Dan and LaRusso earlier to give uh, Roman Catholic their current 3 0 lead. Yep. And they would love to at least double that going yep. into halftime. With the ball at the 25, it's obviously no gimme to hit that field goal. So No, but if you can get another 10 yards, then you're in that, you know, you're right around where they were for their last field goal attempt. Yep. And you know that he had the leg for that, and he probably could have had another 10 yards on it. For sure. 36 seconds to go after the timeout. Roman Catholic's offense coming back onto the field. DeMath will break huddle. So the ball is being spotted at the 21 yard line. Second and 16. So it's second and 16 here. Obviously. Roman Catholic's eyes are more focused on the end zone and just getting in position to try to score here. Tayden Mines in the slot. Nice throw over the middle. Couldn't really see where the ball was going to be spotted. Looks like it's going to be inside the five yard line. First down. Yeah, I saw him in the slot there with way too much space. A really nice slant route there to get open. Ooh, that might. Incomplete is the call on the field. No flags on that. Yeah, Zamir uh, Nuswan with a nice route, kept it underneath the defender, got his hands on it. It looks almost like that could have maybe, uh, you know, the defender might have gotten a hand on him and a little bit early and pulled him backwards, but no call. Yeah, it looked like it uh, could have definitely gone that way. But. So DeMatha will call their last timeout to try to regroup on defense here. Yeah. First and, or second and goal now. Yeah, only 12 seconds have come off the clock since that uh, last Roman Catholic timeout, and they're now down at the two-yard line, knocking on the door to yep. make this potentially a 9 or a 10 nothing game. So if you're Roman Catholic, the run game hasn't really worked for you, but, you know, No, but you've been three, able to pick a, you know, you've been able to pick up a yard or two on a lot of your carries, and you've got, and, and you've got two timeouts, yeah. and that's, I mean, that's really the most important thing here is that, you know, your playbook is wide open. You can do anything you need to do here. You can run it. You can throw it. Um, you know, we've seen them uh, try a couple of fade passes. One of them was like right on target, just great defense. Yep. Um, I believe that one was Dante Jackson on the defense um, to knock it away. But, um, you know, we, we've seen them make some, some really nice throws in those situations. So they could try and go back pylon here. Yeah, so but I wouldn't be surprised if they just try game. and run uh, on, on, here on a second down and just call a timeout if they don't get it. So it looks like they're set up. Two wide receivers on the field. 
and they botch snap, and we've got a flag on the field. False start, so that'll nullify. <laughs> That's going to save them because yeah, that could have been, been a turnover. A disaster for them is only going to cost them five yards. That could have been a turnover right there. That was dangerous. A little unfortunate for DeMatha, honestly, <laughs> that it was a false start. It was like the Jimmy Garoppolo pick six, but it was all good because he stepped out of bounds and it was a safety first. You know? That does make a run a little bit less worthwhile because you're probably not picking up as much, so understandably they're going to throw. Quick pass here to the outside, and the, right around the three-yard line is where he will be spotted. Yeah, I think they got back up to that last line of scrimmage, but they're going to have to burn another timeout now going on to third down. They've still got one more, though. So if they, they do. If they wanted to, they could run it. It just doesn't seem like that's something they're interested in doing. It just depends on what they're, you know, if they view this as four down territory, then maybe you go ahead and try to run the ball. It's a little sure. bit safer. You don't risk a turnover. Uh, well, well, I mean, you do, yeah. but it's less of a risk um, typically to run the ball in this situation. Call the timeout if you don't get in the end zone. And then you just, you know, you run your best play. Yeah. Or kick a field goal if you are so inclined. Right. Well, but if they're thinking that they would kick a field goal on fourth down, I'm probably not running the ball here, honestly. I'm, I'm throwing yeah, you're it. taking your shot, yep. So ball spotted at the two-yard line here for a very important third and goal just as we approach oh, halftime. Keep an eye on Trey Woodley in the slot on the bottom of your screen and Tayden Mines in the slot at the top of your screen. Fields looks to his left, throws it, and that pass is incomplete. So that will set up fourth down. We'll see what they decide to do. Stop the clock with eight seconds left. Looks like they're bringing in the special teams unit to get the field goal here to try to make it a 6 nothing lead right before the half. It's interesting because... You know, part of me feels like it'd be more worth it just to go ahead and go for the touchdown because worst case scenario, you don't get it. Hopefully the ball is still at the two. You have a chance to potentially have something happen where you get a safety. And I know two points is less than three, but how significant is that? I'd rather try and get the seven. So, they're, yeah, they're going to call another timeout, their last one, and talk it over, and they, they might just do that. If I'm Roman Catholic, that's what I'm doing here. I'm going for the touchdown. If I don't get it, I'm going to send everybody to try and get that safety when DeMatha is backed up on their own goal line. Yeah, but the ball's spotted at the two, so DeMatha should have space to be able to just kneel it and get out of here. It's not going to require a play. <sighs> when you're dealing with a situation where you know DeMatha doesn't run a lot of plays out of um, you know out of a formation where you've got the quarterback under center. I think there's a little bit, it's a little bit riskier to run that play, which means that chances are DeMatha goes ahead and stays in their pistol shotgun formation, at which point you can't kneel. So I, I, I definitely hear what you're saying, and you may be right. And if, they, if they've practiced enough with those under center formations and Denzel, you know, they're confident in Denzel uh, and their center not to uh, fumble that, that snap, then sure. But I'd be a little bit nervous considering how little DeMatha runs plays out of those formations. The offense is back on the field here. Beals takes the throw, snap, and the throw is low. Should be ruled incomplete. It is, and DeMatha will take over on downs at their own two-yard line. So we will see this exact scenario play out right now. I can't wait. <laughs> A little bit short on that throw. Receiver tried desperately to come back to it, but his momentum was taking him towards the back pylon. He just didn't have a chance. Yeah. I mean, at this point, I've, I've kind of made my prediction of what I think is going to happen here. So I'm, I'm curious to, to, you know, I would love to be down there in that huddle hearing what they're saying right now because um, obviously they're talking about just that. You know, if, if they're going to put him under center, they're telling them, do not fumble that snap. Yeah. And if they're not putting him under center, they're saying you got to just, you know, you got to get the ball out quickly and chuck it long. Yeah, just find a receiver on the sideline. They're putting him under the center. So they're going to try and get that kneel down. Kind of or actually, push, they did, yeah, they just went ahead bit. and did a little QB sneak yeah, to push forward. To sure, but yep. that'll work. DeMatha protects the ball. They keep it 3 nothing. 
That was, I mean, that's best case scenario for DeMatha. You know, I think it was the right call for Roman Catholic, but that was also, it worked out in DeMatha's best, best interest. Um, really interesting first half of football. Oh, yeah. And I'm I, a big fan of defense, so I enjoyed it. But, you know, the offensive side is very sloppy. Um, you know, Roman Catholic had a good start to the game, and they just fell apart offensively. Couldn't, you know, they just stopped going with their bread and butter. They stopped going with the short passing game. Yeah, and DeMatha's run game couldn't really get going. They had a turnover early, and that really made the difference. seem like they tried to opt more for a pure passing attack on one of those drives, and it was three straight failed plays. So. Yep. The math is going to have to find a way to be multiple if they want to come back in this game. Yep. So we'll take a break here for halftime. We'll be back in about a little bit less than 15 minutes. I'll uh, talk very briefly, uh, you know, go back and recap the first half and get into some second half action in a 3 nothing game here at the PG Sports Learning Complex.
And welcome back to the second half of tonight's game. DeMatha is ready to come back onto the field as we prepare for half number two. Roman Catholic is doing their team building exercise slash jumping jacks here. And DeMatha is congregating in the corner of the end zone. I'm sure ready to be fired up as they return. About 20 seconds or so to go before we're ready to kick off the second half. DeMatha will receive the ball as they kicked off to start in, first, in the first quarter. So we'll see if maybe a little halftime adjustments, see if they can make something happen on their first drive. Yeah, I mean, that first half, if you're DeMatha, you know, defensively, a lot to be proud of. You know, they did a really good job. Honestly, this game could be uh, way more out of hand than 3 nothing, uh with how many possessions Roman Catholic had in plus territory. DeMatha's defense had a great half. DeMatha's offense, however, not so much. Uh, it was, you know, in a lot of ways their fault that Roman Catholic had so many great uh, yeah. starting pos uh, field positions. Uh, between, you know, a lot of turnovers early in, in the game in the first quarter, a fumble by Bud Coombs, um, you know, just a lot of three and outs. They haven't moved the ball well at all on offense, and I'm sure that was a big focus from Coach McGregor during their halftime conversation, which literally just ended as we were coming, uh, as we were turning the mics back on. Two fourth down stops in the red zone for DeMatha has kept this game at a 3 nothing deficit. Uh, despite the fact that Roman Catholic has looked like the better team offensively, at least so far. We'll see if Roman Catholic comes to regret maybe leaving some points on the field there as they were unable to push it in for any touchdowns. And they passed on a couple field goals as well. Yeah, you know, the, the field goal that they pass on at the end of the half, I think it's the right decision if sure. you're Roman Catholic to try and get that touchdown. You still keep DeMatha in a, in a you know dangerous situation for that last kneel down. But they also passed up on a field goal earlier in the game. They had that penalty that called back a touchdown by yes. Deshaun Hopkins. Um, you know, so definitely a lot more to be happy with on the offensive side of the ball if you're Roman Catholic. But they need to finish those drives, and they haven't done that. And because of that, DeMath is still in a position where they could very easily pull this game out when, honestly, this should probably be a 13 nothing, 17 nothing game right now. Yeah, it certainly feels like DeMatha should have a lot more work to do than they do. But if Roman Catholic's defense can keep bottling up DeMatha's offense, they're going to be able to take this home. Yeah, I mean, we talked about that when they ultimately decided to take that one field goal that they made. They may have felt like this could be a game where the, the game ends 3 nothing, or where the game is at least decided by a field goal. Well, for the hometown faithful here, let's hope that's not the case. Yes, I, I mean, I'm, I certainly hope that's not the case. But, you know, I call it how I see it. <laughs> that's my job as an analyst. That's what we do. <laughs> so we have about 30 seconds or so, give or take, before we are ready to kick off this half. DeMatha is sending their return unit onto the field. Still waiting for Roman Catholic. They're huddled up, and they're on their way to the field as well. What kind of adjustments specifically do you anticipate for DeMatha here? Is there anything they can do to maybe get a little more offensive flow going? I'd really like to see them try and start operating with a bit of a short passing game, similar to what we saw from Roman Catholic early in the game. We've seen DeMatha really focus on running you know, deeper routes. And so far, you've I mean, seen a couple of decent-looking throws by Denzel, but some of them have, off, have been off target. And some of that has been because Roman Catholic has gotten pressure. Yep. DeMatha's offensive line has not held up well enough to let those deeper routes develop. And the run game has not worked no matter who they brought in. You know, they, they've used Bud Coombs, they've used Remy Robinson, um, and they've used Elijah Lee, and nobody has been able to get any kind of running room. So, you know, obviously this being DeMatha football, you anticipate at some point somebody's going to break a long run because it feels like every game we do – but Roman Catholic has really done a good job to bottle those up. So I'd like to see some, you know, maybe try and get some throws out into the flats, spread the field out laterally a little bit so that maybe you can open some things up uh, for the offensive uh, line to get the, the running backs through, or it could open things up vertically down the field for your receivers. Well, we'll see what happens there. A very short kick fielded by the up back once again for DeMatha. And he is tackled right around the 35-yard line. So good field position to start this drive, something DeMatha has not had the luxury of having for most of the game. Yeah, they'll start it beyond their 30-yard line here. 
as you said, they haven't had a lot of starting field positions even this good. And, you know, this, this isn't really something to get super excited about, but it's, it's better than we've had. It's, it's something. It's all right, you know. Yeah, so we'll see what we can do here. Denzel leading the offense back on the field. And Bud Coombs is back in the game. We didn't see him a whole lot in that second quarter yeah, after, uh, after that fumble. After that fumble. Like yeah, but they're going to put him back in and, uh, you know, hopefully uh, be a little bit more uh, more careful possessing the football. Pistol formation on the first carry here. Coombs is able to carry the ball right back to the original line of scrimmage. But once again, not a whole lot going on for DeMatha in the run game. And it will be second and ten. Yeah, just no push at, uh, at the point of attack. Uh, by DeMatha's offensive line, well countered by Roman Catholic. So second down and ten here. Dyson and Williams split out to the top or to the bottom of the formation, I should say. Gardner takes the snap, looking that direction, dumps it off into the flat to Coombs. Coombs is able to wiggle his way just past the 40-yard line for a decent pickup on second and down to create a third and manageable here. And DeMatha desperately needing a first down has an opportunity here to maybe move the chains. Yeah, shorter pass there, kept it underneath the defense, but it gives Bud Coombs a chance to catch the ball and try and put a move on the defender. Ball was a little bit low, and that certainly did not give Coombs a, a lot of time to try and get where he needed to go. Mason Lindsay goes in motion from the bottom of the top of your screen on the line of scrimmage. Gardner takes the snap once again, and it's another handoff, and this time Coombs is able to break through. By far, and I know that was only like six or seven yards, yeah. but by far the longest run of the day for maybe either team, certainly for the Stags, but I don't think that Roman Catholic has had a run of that long yet. And we've got a man we on, have a, down yep, on the field for yep, the Roman Catholic. Yep, we have a player down. Um, we'll, we'll take him off the camera uh, here and uh, let the trainers attend to him. Hopefully nothing serious, but, um, you know, anytime you see a guy staying down that long, not really moving, then, um, you know, you fear the worst. It's hard to tell what happened on the play. Obviously, we hope for the best. Yeah, I mean, certainly there's a lot more movement in the line of scrimmage than what we've seen, and so it could have just been a situation where bodies got tangled up and, yep. you know, they haven't been used to that so far today. Well, he's able to get to his feet. That's number 56. That is Michael Ford, who was walking off. It looked like he had a little bit of a stinger in his shoulder. I'm hoping that's the extent of the injury. Yeah, not really moving that right arm a whole lot at all, but he is able to get off the field on his own power. Doesn't look like he's limping at all, so it doesn't seem to be lower body, which is obviously a really good sign. So a seven-yard gain for DeMatha on third down there to move the chains. They have the ball at their own 47, trying to eke across the midfield marker here on this next series. Gardner once again in the shotgun. Three wide or two wide receivers on the field this time. Handoff to Coombs. Kind of hard to tell what happened on that. Didn't look like a great communication there. Yeah, Coombs that, was able that, to that, rumble that, for a, maybe a yard or two to salvage the play. But I think that was just one of those plays where Roman, you know, Roman Catholic managed to cover that read option perfectly, right. where neither option <laughs> was a great didn't read. Have a good option, yeah. And because of that, Denzel held the ball a little bit longer than normally you would see on a play like that. And Coombs did his best to get to the outside, but again, Roman Catholic, a great job covering. So we'll do it again here. Gardner takes the snap, fakes the handoff, looking over the middle field, steps up in the pocket, slings it down. Looks like that should be a penalty, but no flag here. Cody Williams definitely was held up by the defensive back. The fans are calling for one. You know, I... Hard to say for sure, but there definitely was some contact there. It was a great job by Denzel to step up in the pocket because yes. that was a really good rush. Bud Coombs did a nice job to pick it up and allow Denzel to step up as far as he did. And he just unleashed one. And it I mean, I thought that Cody Williams probably could have gotten to that one if he had not been uh, interfered with, but no flag on the play. The refs determined the contact was marginal, so we will play on third down and nine for DeMatha. Trying to pick up their second first down of this drive. Gardner takes the snap. We've got a penalty Yeah, number 15, uh, J Josiah S uh, Simmons, the linebacker from a Catholic, looks like he was lined up in the neutral zone. And that is exactly what the call is. We've got encroachment once again. And so that'll make this third down a little bit easier for DeMatha as it pushes them across midfield and sets up a third and four. 
There was a call back in the first half where, you know, we thought that there should have been a call against Amatha that was not called. So maybe this one was just a makeup penalty for that. I think this one would have been a little more significantly in Amatha's favor than the other one would have been yeah. in their favor. Sure. <laughs> That's okay. Gardner takes a snap, looks down the field, and hits his receiver right on the money. Nice turnaround route just inside the 40-yard line, right around the 38. And that'll pick up at Damatha first down. Great throw there, and the sophomore receiver LeVar Keys with the catch. And that was a that was a dart. That was a great throw, right on time. Anticipated it, felt the rush, and put it on yeah. a line. <laughs> Offensive line has been holding up pretty well early in this half, giving Gardner a nice pocket. And yeah, he's taking advantage of it. No, they're giving him a lot more time, and he's making a, he's made a couple of really nice throws because of it. Once again, Gardner takes the snap, drops back, looking over the middle. Rush is coming in. He throws the ball away smartly. Yeah, good job there by Denzel. Josiah Simmons was uh, was coming after him there. Looks like Coombs was his intended receiver, so no concerns about grounding, even though the ball did not get to the line of scrimmage. He had an eligible, so second and ten coming up. Matha playing a little bit more up-tempo here. Gardner directing Coombs to flank him to his left. Gardner takes the snap, fakes the handoff, and once again, as soon as we said something about the Mathis offensive line doing a good job protecting Gardner, the last two plays, he's had guys right in his kitchen. A late flag comes out back around the 27-yard line. So we'll see what the penalty is. It's well downfield from where the... You know, the action was taking place. So I'm wondering what that official further downfield saw. Got a personal foul face mask on the defense. Huge that call against Roman Catholic is going to give DeMatha 15 free yards and a first down. first down after that sack because it was going to be third and long. And two, now yeah, two straight great defensive plays against that offensive line are completely wiped away. Obviously tough to see from our perspective what happened. We were focused on what was going on in the backfield a little bit more. DeMatha will take the ball inside the 30-yard line at the 27, first and 10. Gardner looks to the sideline for instructions. Takes the snap, once again drops back, short drop, throwing to the end zone. LeVar Keys! What a catch, but it is oh. incomplete. Yeah, he, I don't, yeah, he tried did. to bring it in with one hand, but he, he, he didn't, didn't, quite he didn't have possession before he got out of bounds. I mean, it was a great job to haul it in, but you got to have possession while you're still in bounds, and unfortunately, he did not. Definitely something to consider going for maybe later in the game, though, because sure. that, was, that was an excellent play design. Gardner put it right on the money. By the way, real quick before we talk more about that, I just uh, spotted number 56. That's Michael Ford for Roman Catholic is back on the field after what looked like a stinger earlier. So good to see him back out there. But, you know, that, yes, maybe they try and call that shot play again later on. But if nothing else, the fact that they got it so close to being completed, it opens up uh, potentially for uh, better running lanes, which right there, Bud Coombs, you know, got three yards, which is still more than they've probably been averaging on the ground today. A little more than that. He, he, he got four, yeah. Four. Go. Yeah, four is a successful play on, on first down. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, so positive down, DYR. So. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do here. <laughs> Rest in peace, football outsiders. That's uh, okay. They still got us covered. Yes, they do. As long as I can still have my DVOA, I'm happy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care if it's football outsiders. It doesn't it's still matter. Still airing yet. shots. Gardner's able to hit an open receiver in the flat, and he is able to scoot down inside the 10 yard line for a first down. We are both trying to figure out who made the play there. On that the was number the seven, so that was Bud Coombs. Bud Coombs once again in the flat. Yeah. They've gone to him a couple of times in those situations, and it is paying off right now as DeMatha has their first red zone opportunity, I think, of today. By far, by far the best drive that we've seen from the Stags on offense so yes. far today. Let's see if they can pay it off. Garner takes the snap, hands it off right up the gut for... What looks like a couple of yards down out down around, around the five yard line. Yep. So, so they got about Bud almost Coombs halfway to the goal line. Two yards on the play. Yeah, they started back around the nine, uh, based on where they had the, the stick at. They were at the nine yard line, so they picked up about four. So DeMatha will take that once again, positive DYAR. Uh, <laughs> I promise we won't do that too much. 
Gardner is ready to take the snap. Hands it off. Some folks are. I, I, yeah, offside, I, I heard I heard that coming from upstairs, <laughs> but uh, no laundry on the field. So Coombs once again with a short gain on the carry, and that'll set up a third and goal from about the four-yard line. What kind of player are you thinking here, Corey? Third and you know, medium. Run game has been okay. But Run game has Gardner's been okay, but also been playing yeah, well. I would go with a pass. I'd try to roll. I would probably try and roll Gardner out to the right. you got a lot of space down there at the bottom of your screen. I'm a little bit concerned that they've got two wide receivers split out to the top and only one at the bottom. I would think you'd want to take advantage of having more space. Coombs carries it once again up the gut, takes a big shot right uh, he around about the, the two. two uh, looks like one yard line, two yard line, tough to say. It looks like they're giving him the one. So DeMatha looks like they're intent on leaving the offense on the field here or not. They're going to call a timeout here, it looks like. Talk about it a little bit. Yeah. Gardner looks a little uh, bit disappointed in that news. but Yeah, and, you know, that's uh, – uh, I, I really don't think that we should have called a timeout there. We've got them on their heels. Right. This, you know, yes, it gives us a chance to talk about what we want to do here, but it also gives them a chance to regroup, catch their breath, and talk about what they want to do to defend this play. I would have just, you know, at that point, just run it right up the middle. You yep. know, maybe a little tush push. <laughs> I don't know if Gardner squats. He definitely doesn't squat as much like as Jalen Hurts does. I'm sure he puts. But I don't numbers, think he needs to. I don't think he needs to squat that much against high schoolers. Probably not. <laughs> Unless there's another Jalen Hurts over there, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> so we will see what Dematha decides to do on this fourth and goal from the one. They're trying to get on the board and take the lead after trailing three nothing for probably most of the game. I it's mean, yeah, it was three nothing. What early second? Was it already three uh, nothing at the end of the first quarter? I think it was in the second quarter they scored that field goal. I should have written it down. And I did. Yeah, I should so. have too, and I didn't. So here comes the offense onto the field. Bud Coombs once again in the backfield. Gardner lining up in the shotgun. Apologize Three. for the shaking on the scoreboard, yes. but it is very alive here in the stands right now. Good student section on hand here. At Good Martin parent Apple section State. too. Everybody's Gardner under excited. center. He looks like he's doing it, Corey. There's a little touch <laughs> push, and he piles into the end zone for a touchdown. I love Demetha it. That takes a six to three lead. I love the it. Extra point. Love to see it. Little NFL inspired action here on Friday night. Much appreciated here in the booth, mainly because it works. Yes, and that, that's the most important thing. If it works, then that's all you can ask for. Nice uh, nice play call there by the Stags. Nice job by Gardner to find the hole to get through. Great job of the offensive line to open that hole for him. So Veyu on for the extra point to make this a four-point lead for DeMatha. Veyu hit us all of his point after attempts last, two weeks ago when we called that game. And the kick is up and good here. So Samantha takes a 7-3 lead. 5.48 here to go in the third quarter. What a terrific offensive drive for the Stags. You take off more than half of the time on the clock for the third quarter. You march it all the way down the field. You take the lead, score your first points of the game. And for the first time tonight, the Seton cheerleaders are doing push-ups. Love it. Aided by a penalty on that drive, but nonetheless, DeMatha's offense looked more spry than it had all evening. And maybe a harbinger of things to come here for Roman Catholic after they got had a lot of success in the first half, getting a lot of push. They got pushed around a little bit on that drive, minus a couple of plays. So if DeMatha can sustain that offensive force, they might regret the fact that they left so many points on the field at the end of the first half. So they will get their chance to respond right now. As DeMatha prepares to kick it away. Yeah, I mean, if you're Roman Catholic there, you got to be just a little bit shell-shocked that DeMatha moved the ball that well against your defense, which had been so good at stifling them in the first half. You know, at this point, if you're the offense for Roman Catholic, you have got to possess the ball, at least get a couple of first downs to give your defense some time to, to catch their breath and recollect themselves um, after a really uh, poor defensive effort on that last drive. 
Well, on the flip side, DeMath will be presumably geared up for this defensive stand to try oh, yeah. to get them off the field quickly and get the offense right back on the field and try to grab control of this football game. Yeah, the defense has had a lot of time to rest. They had all of halftime uh, and that very long first drive of this second half. So you know they're keyed up and they're excited because now they have a lead to defend. And, you know, you have a much different mentality when you're defending a lead as opposed to trying your best to avoid allowing a lead to expand against you. And we, we didn't give DeMatha's defense enough credit for how well they played, I think. Like we talked no, a lot I, about I, Roman yeah, Catholic, we, we, we they've done their job as well. So yeah, they, they feel confident that they can stop this offense. That's fair. I you know I did mention that you know if you're DeMatha's defense, you have a lot to feel sure. good about. But, you know, so much of the first half was, you know, DeMatha's offense not getting the job right. done. And so that kind of overshadowed yeah, how good of a job more on the that. defense yeah. did. But right there, I mean, they get off to a great start. Negative, you know, Negative lost about half a yard. So DeMatha has Roman Catholic behind the chains again after a non-successful run play. Seems to be a trend. Beals takes the snap, hands it off once again. And this is blown up one more time. The running back did a nice job to try to fight his way forward to pick up maybe a yard. Yeah, I think he got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. So well, it's going to be third and ten. Third and ten, and now DeMatha has an opportunity to potentially get off the field and get the offense right back out there after such a successful drive. This is big boy time for Roman Catholic. Like, yeah, I mean, you, you have to get a first down here and let your defense rest. If you send them right back out there, if you're DeMatha, you are massively confident that you can go down and score another touchdown. Just shows how quickly a football game can turn here. Now they're on their heels. Let's see what they can do. Beals drops back. Rush gets home. He rolls outside. Throws down the field. He's got a wide open man. And there you go. Instant momentum for Roman Catholic. A big completion. Trey Woodley got way down behind Terry Dorsey. I'm not sure what the coverage was there, but somebody lost track of their guy. They're running hurry up here. Very fortunate up that the, the ball 46. was a little overthrown, or that could have been six. Or underthrown, I should and say. Once again, the middle of the field is wide open. DeMatha is able to run down the ball carrier and prevent the touchdown, but back-to-back -back blown coverages here after the third and ten opportunity. Yeah, hit Luke Van Brill back on that seam route. They've hit, hit him a couple of times on that, and, uh, you know, we talked about this. They had to get a couple of first downs. It wasn't looking good after those first two plays, but then they get a big play down near midfield and then an equally big play to put them in the red zone. And DeMatha's right back on their heels. So DeMatha takes a timeout, probably needed at this point after a couple of what I have to be, assume were a little bit of miscommunication there. Yeah, I mean. Wide open uh, middle of the field is just not supposed to happen. No, that, that should never happen as wide open as he got. You know, somebody missed their read. And, you know, I already said the play before that, you know, getting behind the defense, just lucky that it was underthrown and gave Terry Dorsey a chance to get back to him. Um, I don't even think that, that Dorsey really ended up playing a factor in that play because the, the ball was so massively underthrown that it took, um, uh, it took Woodley to the ground as he went to make the catch. Yep. So this will be a nice test for Roman Catholic as well, though. We saw them struggle to score in the red zone. But now that they're trailing, the urgency has ticked up quite a bit. First and 10 from the 17. We've got whistles before the snap. I didn't get a good look at what happened there, did you, Eric? I didn't see a flag come out from anybody, so. Yeah. Referee was not set, so uh, okay. we will try it again. And here we go now. First and 10 from the 17 yard line. Beals takes the snap, looks to his left, throws, and the ball is batted at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Traveled way back. Yeah. I think that was Darrell Carey. No, uh, maybe that was Emmett Laws. Yeah, that was Emmett Laws, number nine. So now second and 10 from the 17 yard line. Yeah, I thought I saw a number eight, but Darrell Carey is a defensive back. He's not going to be that close to the line of scrimmage. Unless he's bringing a safety blitz or something. Yeah, no, great, not. great play by Emmett Laws. Terrific defensive tackle for the Stags. They run a little bit of a reverse sweep here, and they've got something cooking. 
but DeMath is able to run down the ball carrier and minimize the game to about six yards. Yeah, good job by DeMath's defensive backs to cover that because Tate and Mines had a lot of space to move with the ball after that reverse. Picked up about half the yardage to gain. Sets up a third and manageable. So third and four. Potential four down territory here. We've seen Roman Catholic be aggressive and not afraid of going for it on fourth down. Certainly, And looks like DeMatha is going to get Ooh. hit with an ill-timed encroachment penalty. I think that was Jordan Williams on the defensive line, number 45. It looked like he put his hand up to his head, like couldn't believe what he just did. Well, that'll set up a first and goal for Roman Catholic. <sighs> Man, a couple big plays for Roman Catholic, and then DeMatha shooting themselves in the foot down in the red zone. Still got an opportunity to make this stop here. First and goal from the six. We'll see what Roman Catholic has up their sleeves here. Four wide receivers on the field. Beals takes the snap, looks to his right, throws over the middle for a quick little check down, and he is into the end zone for a touchdown. And just like that, Roman Catholic is back on top, 9-7, yeah. to seven, and trying to get back up to a three-point lead pending the extra point. I was watching for the flag just to see if they wanted to wave off another Deshaun Hopkins uh, touchdown, but this time Hopkins is in for the score. Roman Catholic takes the lead right back with a very quick march down the field. The only good news about that is that it wasn't a ton of time for their defense to rest. But, uh, you know, if you're DeMatha, not, not happy that you – take the lead with such a great drive and then immediately give it right back. Well, DeMatha's offense with their newfound success will have to continue that. Although that ball is off the upright, and so DeMatha will only be trailing by two, which... That's significant. Typically That's comes significant. back to haunt teams missing PATs. So. Zayu is a good kicker. If it comes down to him, I'm confident if I'm DeMatha. So, you know, after three total points scored in the first half, back-to-back -to -back touchdowns to open up the second. So DeMatha's defense got gashed for a couple big plays, big penalty on that drive, and that allowed Roman Catholic to, for the first time tonight, find the end zone just a couple of minutes after DeMatha found the end zone for the first time. And so we'll see if the trend continues and the offenses stay hot here, hopefully for DeMatha's sake they do for right now. Roman Catholic prepares to kick the ball away. They've had a couple of short kickoffs. Haven't had a whole lot of kickoffs to do because there hasn't been much scoring, but both of their kickoffs so far today have been on the short side. We'll see what they do this time. The kick is away once again short. This time it hits the turf, which is dangerous. DeMatha falls on it. And they'll start their drive just inside their own 25. Not as good a field position this time off the short kick. A better placed kick where the up back wasn't able to field it. And DeMatha had to quickly fall on it because the ball is free on a kickoff. And he can't afford to let that potentially take an awkward bounce and result in a long, effectively onside kick. Gardner getting some last few instructions from the sideline before he heads back out to join the rest of his offense. 3.05 to go here in the third quarter. During the quarter break, we'll uh, talk about our upcoming broadcasts on DM Stags TV. Gardner takes the snap, drops back to pass after the fake. And some room to run here. Remy Robinson, Remy Robinson to catch. The, uh, the fullback on that play yeah. after the fake handoff gets a nice little gain on first down. And they are going to give him the first down here yeah. as he reached the 34-yard line. Love to see it. Really nice play there by the Stags. Yep. Gardner took what was there, and Robinson did a nice job just to barrel his way forward to the, to the uh, sticks. DeMatha was condensed and then sends the wide receivers out. Gardner fakes the handoff once again, looking downfield, throwing it deep. Looks like an underthrow, and it is broken up. A little bit dangerous to throw it that far across the field. He was yeah. targeting LeVar Keys, who he almost had for a touchdown a little bit earlier in the game. 
The Keys once again tried to make an adjustment to the ball, but with the balls that underthrown, it was a little bit of a wobbler. At that point, it's just a jump ball, and you got to do the best you can to just make sure it's not intercepted. Right, yeah. I mean, I was just about to say, the offensive player almost becomes the defender in that situation. If you can catch it, great, but the most important thing is to make sure that they don't get it. The Gardner this time hands off short side to Coombs. Coombs, and that is about a six-yard pickup. Coombs gets upended, but you know, that works to the benefit of the team. It gives him a couple extra yards as he flies through the air. So. Yeah, and it's a positive play. Got a little more than half of what he needed on second down. Yep. So it'll be a third manageable once again for DeMatha. They had success picking these up on their previous drive. So after the missed shot play on first down, a nice play to keep them back on schedule here. And we'll see what they're able to do on third and medium. Whistles. Got they're going to. More whistles. Stop Looks like a timeout here. for Roman Catholic here. All right, so each team has burned a timeout here in the early going of the second half, almost to the end of the third quarter. And while we go ahead during this uh, short break in the action, we'll go ahead and talk about our upcoming broadcasts. So uh, next week, DeMatha hosts Life Christian Academy. We'll have that action right here on DM Stags TV. A week after that, we host Clarkson North. Uh, that'll also be here on DM Stacks TV from the uh, Marvin F. Wilson Stadium at the Prince George's Sports and Learning Complex. And then the week after that, our first big game in conference against Gonzaga. We will have that game as well. A couple weeks later, our last home game of the season against St. John's. You'll be able to catch that one on ESPNU. And then uh, on November 1st, we'll have our, uh, uh, our All Saints Day liturgy. Uh, you'll be able to watch that one from DeMatha's Facebook page. Eric, you will not be with me next week. I've still got to figure out who my uh, partner in the booth is going to be for Life Christian, but you'll be back for Clarkson North and Gonzaga, and those will be a couple fun games, especially Gonzaga. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. Uh, I'm sorry I won't be here next week. Uh, you could just Vin Scully it and do the entire broadcast you know, by yourself. I could. You should give these guys the day off, too. Tell them, you know, I'm just, not only are you going <laughs> to oh, call so the game, I'm gonna you're going to run the whole show. <laughs> Don't think that would be wise on my part for a number of reasons. <laughs> I would find it hilarious. <laughs> All right. You might be the only one. 151 to go here in the third quarter. Third and five for DeMatha. Gardner takes a snap. Empty backfield. Looks, and he runs up the middle, and he spin moves to around the 47-yard line. Plenty to pick up the first down to move the chains for DeMatha. A designed run on that play. Nice work to move the chains. And I think that takes over as the most successful run play for DeMatha today. That one went for nine yards as opposed to seven, which had been our previous long. And it picked up a third down. Yeah. Or the third down. So that's a big deal in its own right. Yeah, great vision there by, uh, by Gardner to see that hole open up, to see nobody home uh, spying him and took what, it, what the defense gave him. Gardner takes a snap this time, hands it off. Coombs met immediately, in the but and he's able to fight off the tackler. Nice second effort there to still fight for a yard or two, depending on the spot. Looked like he was going to lose a couple, and instead he picked up maybe a couple. Also, to give him one and spot it right at midfield. Figured DeMatha should get at least one more play, maybe two, depending on how long they wait to snap this ball. Receivers bunched to the short side of the formation here. And we're inside 40 seconds and a half, so if they decide to, this could be the last play of the quarter. Gardner takes a snap, fakes the handoff, looking downfield once again. He's got a man over the oh, middle, and he throws it man. behind him. There was an opportunity there Emmanuel for a big gain for Emmanuel Dyson. Emmanuel Dyson was wide open, had about three steps of separation on Mikey Preston and just badly thrown behind him to the point that Preston got his hands on it and could have picked it off. It would have been a tough catch to make for the defender, but it was right there in his hands. Yeah, that was a potential touchdown right there. Yeah, really disappointing play there, but that will force DeMatha to run at least one more play here in this Matthew third quarter. Try to regroup here on third down and nine. Keep this drive going after some success here. Low snap. Gardner looks down the field, throws it over the middle. This time he connects, and that is good enough to pick up a first down for LeVar Keys. 
That was better execution on the throw. I love the confidence there by Gardner because that's essentially the same spot in the field that yep. he just threw a horribly errant pass to Dyson, this time right on target to LeVar Keyes. Matha moving quickly here to get one more play in here before the half or before the quarter ends. And it's a run up the middle and a big play here. Elijah Lee. Elijah Lee right up the gut to inside the 20 to give DeMatha a red zone opportunity when we come back on the other end of the quarter break. Yeah, obviously the, the play or the game clock stops briefly after the first down, but then once the ball is set, yeah. it continues running. So that'll take us to the end of the half. Uh, 33 yards picked up on those last couple of plays. Great finish to the half for DeMatha. They, you know, you're almost disappointed the quarter ended there because that potentially interrupts their momentum that they picked up. And, I mean, that, that was very similar to what we saw happen with Roman Catholic on their last offensive possession where DeMatha had them dead to rights after two plays and then a couple of big uh, big plays for Roman Catholic completely turned that drive around. Well, here DeMatha looked like they might be stymied around midfield. They get a big play on third down on the throw to LeVar Keys, and then Elijah Lee with a huge run up the middle to pick up 12 yards on a first and 10. Yeah, DeMatha's offensive success on the first drive has carried over to their second one of the second half. Seems like they've figured some things out along the offensive line, better protection, and kind of some of the passes have been longer throws, but it's been more play action as well, some more uh, delayed handoff fakes, throwing over the middle of the field. Pretty nice job making sure that Gardner's not just hanging out in the pocket and waiting for the rush to get home. Good yeah. job sort of speeding up the, um, the the tempo of the offense and getting more big plays out of it. Yeah, and the receivers are running good routes. Um, you know, you've seen it. Gardner's missed on a couple of those throws, but he's also hit on some of them. And the key is that because they're running such good routes, Denzel doesn't have to stand back there holding the ball in the pocket for a really long time on a lot of these plays. Yep. So that keeps him protected. It gives him a cleaner pocket to throw from, which is going to lead to more accurate passes. So we are back here, 12 minutes on the clock. We are in the fourth quarter. DeMatha down by two, but driving. Keep an eye on Cody zone. Williams in the in the slot down at the bottom of your screen. Gardner hands the ball off, run up the middle for a modest gain on first down. Elijah Lee with the carry once again. It's just across the 15-yard line, so that'll be a second and eight coming up for DeMatha. Yep, Lee and Keyes will check out of the game as DeMatha brings in a couple of offensive subs. And as we mentioned earlier, that missed PAT looms a little large right now. If DeMatha has to settle for a field goal, that would be good enough to give them the lead, but obviously they've got bigger plans. Gardner takes the snap, looks to his left, then to his right. Quick check down pass. Not a great play for DeMatha. Lost a few yards on the play, and that's going to set up a third and long. Yeah, uh, pretty good route there by LeVar Keys from the slot, but by the time that he started to come open, Gardner had to get rid of the ball, targeted Cody Williams, and got him for a loss of about a yard. So that'll set up a third and 11. DeMatha needs to get to the seven in order to keep the drive going. Looks like they lost a little more than one yard on that last play. Quick pass over the middle, and that ball is caught. Caught. That was Emmanuel Dyson. And that looks like it's going to be good enough to move the chain. Yeah, give him a first and goal. Great catch by Dyson. He's been targeted a lot today. We've seen a few errant throws, but that one right where it right needed to be, and a and great traffic. catch. Really good concentration to hold on to the ball, going to the ground and ensuring that DeMatha picks up first down. Now they'll have it first and goal. Gardner takes the snap, turns to hand it off, and that ball is carried inside the five-yard line to around the three-yard line by Bud Coombs. Nice powerful run to fall forward through the hit by number 33, uh, Lazarius Toombs. Toombs tackling Coombs on that play. DeMatha going pretty quickly here. Coombs still in the backfield. Gardner takes a snap, sends Williams in motion. Runs to his left, puts a move, and there it is. he is able to get to the end. Reassumes the lead, 13 to nine. Extra point coming up. I love the concept on that play call for the Stags. You send, uh, you send Cody Williams in motion coming back toward the line. Then he cuts back out. 
you know, a little bit reminiscent of the two touchdown passes that the Chiefs had in the Super Bowl. Obviously, this time he's not running behind the line of scrimmage. He's going into the end zone, but it gives you a couple of options. Either he might break free behind the defense, or it opens up for Denzel to run it in, and that's exactly what he did as they get set, set to go, go for two. For two here to try to make it a six-point lead. A little shovel pass on the goal line. More Chiefs. More Chiefs callbacks right there with the little shovel pass. Patrick Mahomes-esque there. Borrowing the Andy Reid playbook here. Yes. DeMatha stretches the lead to six, which is also big because we've already seen Roman Catholic miss an extra point. Yep. So a potential touchdown by them would not, would not be a sure thing that they would take the lead. Yeah. So a big two points there for DeMatha to stretch that lead to six. With 9.44 to go, DeMatha's defense will come back onto the field after the offense does a pretty good job of regaining the momentum after an uncharacteristically off stretch there by the DeMatha defense. Yeah. Two big plays allowed and a penalty to sustain a drive. Uh, hopefully DeMatha's defense will come up and answer the call here, but DeMatha's offense has certainly woken up. Yeah, the play calling has been a lot better this half. has been, you know, not to say that the, the plays they were calling in the first half were terrible, but they weren't very, they weren't varied. You know, they were not sure. varying up their play calling in the first half. It was a lot of runs up the gut, uh, you know, deep shots, nothing really in the intermediate area. And that's really where Denzel, I think, excels is with those intermediate routes. Um, you know, he's been much more accurate on those throws today than he has been on anything outside the numbers. The most accurate, I mean, he had the one really nice throw to LeVar Keyes that almost went for a touchdown sure. back in the second quarter or in the third quarter. Um, but that was really the most accurate throw he had, he had made all game on those deep shot passes. So DeMatha kicks it away. Deep kick this time, fielded right around the five yard line. Solid return here. DeMath is attempting to corral the ball carrier. Whew. And good coverage down the field. And that'll set up a relatively long field for Roman Catholic here as they try to score and answer the bell here after DeMatha has back-to-back -to -back touchdowns on their two drives to start this half. Yeah, spotted it right at the 25. So a decent return, but nothing special yeah. by Taden Mines. Yeah, Taden Mines looks explosive, so DeMath has done a good job of containing him in the special teams game. Yeah. And he hasn't been quite as involved as I think Roman Catholic would like him to be in the passing game. He's had a couple of catches, but hasn't been able to break anything away. Taden Mines switches spots with his fellow receiver, uh, J. Ford King. Fields takes the snap, looks to over the middle, and it's a quick completion. Two mines at the 30. So sort of getting back on, at least for that play, to what we've seen. Mines is a little bit gimpy walking out there. He's going to stay on the field, but definitely looked like he might have tweaked something. He looks a little worse for the wearer, favoring one of those legs. Hopefully he's doing okay. Beals takes the snap, looks to his left hits mines again so seemingly good enough to receive the pass and that's another modest gain there ball spotted right around the 34 it looks so it's going to be a third and short coming up he's still got a little bit of a hop step going and now they're going to take him out Looked like he was ready to stay in the game <laughs> um, hey, he's playing hard i mean you gotta respect it for a second i was wondering if that was a little bit of a travis kelsey a call back to the what's on twitter today of him pretending like his knee was hurting we don't need to talk about that <laughs> Beals trying um, to draw a hard yeah. count to math that doesn't fall for it. Learned their lesson from a couple weeks ago when uh, St. Michael tried to pull that a couple of times and had some success, but nothing doing here. Beals takes the snap, quick pass out, and a nice tackle. Yeah, the adjustment yes. took Jay Ford King back yes. about three steps, and he couldn't regain what yeah, the, he had. The pass was a little off the mark, pulled yep. him away from the line to gain, and DeMatha was able to rally the football to set up a fourth down here. And looks like the punt team's coming on here. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of an interesting choice because time is a little bit short here. Only eight minutes to go and ticking. And DeMatha's offense has been cooking. If they are able to put together a sustained drive, even if it just comes away with three points, it feels like the game's going to be out of reach. Yeah, two possessions for the Stags in this half, two touchdowns. So the punt is away. Looks like a short high kick. Yeah, once bounces again. Bounces right around the 38-yard line and rolls. Ref rules that it rolls out right at the 34. So DeMatha will get decent field position here once again. 
And we'll see if their offense can seal the deal here after two excellent drives to put the math ahead. We'll see how this goes. Yeah, uh, big possession here coming out for the Stags. If not territory, you know, the nice thing here, field goal makes it 18-9. You know, it's a two-possession game, yep. so you don't need to punch in the end zone, but you've got to get it into scoring range, and you've got to take some time off the clock. Yep. And if you don't score, you have to make sure that you're putting them in a negative space as far as the field position battle goes. Yeah, you're not going to be able to run the clock out with seven and a half minutes to go without scoring points. So the math is going to have to sustain a drive here if they want to seal the deal or at least set their defense up to potentially make a final stand to finish this one off. But... We'll get there when we get there. Gardner drops back to throw, looks down the field, rolls out to his right, scrambles, and is able to get out of bounds right at the 36-yard line for a two-yard gain. Yeah, that's not going to help with running the clock out. I mean, I believe that it'll start running once they uh, once, once they, they set the, the ball. ball. Yep. So we've got a timeout ah. for... Looks like there's a guy down on the far sideline for Roman Catholic. Hard to see who it is. We'll keep you updated on that. Yeah, keep not not a great angle to be able to see his number. Um, looks like they're just going to stretch him out a little bit, so hopefully nothing severe. But DeMath will take a quick break. Uh, while we're out on this official timeout, uh, introduce you to our broadcast staff for this evening. Our producer is Jalen Jackson. Uh, our switchboard operator is Leo Watson. Working the cameras upstairs, we've got Cameron Lamb, uh, Nate uh, uh, Nabayu, and Tyson Woods. And then, of course, the two of us in the booth, Eric Meyer, class of 09, our play-by-play -play caller, and uh, I'm Corey Puffett, class of 2010, as your color analyst. Player was able to get up and off the field. Did you see his number? Uh, I believe it was 22, Lou Gaddy. Okay. was the guy down on the play. So defensive back for Roman Catholic, but uh, able to get off the field. Hopefully he's okay. We'll second and play. eight for DeMatha now. Pistol formation. Gardner takes the snap. Nice run up the middle, and that's going to – oh, the ball is out again, though. And recovered by Roman Catholic. Big hit laid on Bud Coombs, and once again the ball comes out. He's had some fumbling problems this season. So after a pretty nice gain on that carry on second down, the ball comes out, and DeMatha has turned the ball over up six with 7.14 to go here giving Roman Catholic a pretty short field, relatively speaking. They'll get the ball at the, or at their own 46-yard line, and that gives them a little bit of life here to try to maybe get back in this game and take the lead. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge turnover by the Stags. So the defense will have to stand up one more time. Beals drops back to pass. He's got pressure on him. He evades the pressure and is able to throw the ball away. So that'll set up second and 10. Great defense there to get the pressure into the backfield. You had uh, Emmett Laws was in on the pressure. Blake Hauser was in on the pressure. We got a flag on the field. And it looks like, I think that's, wa yeah, they're waving off the flag, so. Okay. Yeah, it looked like it was potentially a grounding call, but the quarterback was out of the pocket. Well out of the pocket. I mean, he was, clearly he got was the ball way outside the, the hash stage. marks. And you can see where the ball is on the far hash marks. Yep. There was no way that, that was going to be a grounding call. No. Clearly got the ball past the line of scrimmage, outside the pocket. Good play by him to avoid the sack. Second and ten coming up. Beals takes the snap. Hits There's the a good throw. Man. And he's able to take the ball just across the 50-yard line to set up a third and probably four, depending on the spot. They've done a pretty good job of using Deshaun Hopkins on those uh, on those little uh, semi-wheel routes out of the running back spot. So it'll be third and five coming up. So once again, DeMatha with a third down opportunity here. You got to think it's getting close to four down territory for Roman Catholic. You can't afford to keep punting the ball back to DeMatha. So we'll see what they decide to do here on third down. Beals takes the snap, looks over the middle, doesn't see what he wants to see, and he has to check it down for a minimal gain, probably just back to the line of scrimmage. 
Yep. And that'll set up a fourth and five. Had to do a jump pass just to get that ball out of the pocket to his tight end, Luke Van Brill, right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it looked like he was looking for like one of those guys to slip out over the middle just behind the front seven for a nice little screen pass, but it didn't develop for him, so he had to hit somebody else. And it uh, didn't quite work out as planned. The Matha crowd getting raucous here on fourth and five. Yeah. It's like another... See, uh, DeMath is calling a penalty this time. Or Roman Catholic is calling a penalty. Okay. P penalty. Or, uh, timeout. Timeout. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm saying. Thank you, Corey. I've been so excited this game. It's got me all fired up. I'm saying all the wrong things. <laughs> yeah, I'll be interested to see what Roman Catholic dials up here because it looked like they were preparing to go for it, except that they had taken uh, Samaj Beals off the field. So I was a little confused. Yeah, it... it it looked like they had changed their entire personnel, but... But they also did not look like they were lining up to punt the ball away. No, and you've got the ball in plus territory. There's under six minutes to go. Still enough time based on how successful their last drive was on defense but that was, taking the ball away. Yeah, but that's but a turnover, it, right? right? Like You're not going to get those every drive. Like the fact if you're that, DeMatha, you certainly hope not. Yeah, like DeMatha was... The process was good, and that's something that has to concern Roman Catholic. Yeah. You've got a plan on this maybe being it here. So the offense does come back onto the field. Beals is there in the backfield at quarterback with uh, with Deshaun Hopkins. Beals takes the snap, looks outside the numbers, throws it over the oh, opposite wow. shoulder, and the receiver is just unable to ja adjust. Ja Ja Boy tried his best to make that play happen, but... He made a great adjustment. We I haven't, thought he was going to get it. We haven't called Ja Ja Boyd's number since early in yeah, the first, first quarter, quarter yeah. but he did a great job to adjust the ball. It was just a little out of his reach, and it may have kind of entered his blind spot. He got turned around, was looking over his right shoulder, had to turn to the left because the ball sailed a little bit uh, too far to the sideline. So DeMath will take over at their own 49. Take two trying to finish this game off with the offense on the field after back-to-back -back stops from their defense. Elijah Lee on the field at running back. You've also got the uh, fullback, Remy Robinson, in the slot. We've seen him have some successful plays. So they're going to scoot him back in to more of a uh, blocking role. And he does just that. He blows up number seven, and that leads to a very <sighs> successful run there. What a great open field tackle there because Elijah Lee had a lot of room to run. That was number 22 for Roman Catholic, yeah, Lou Gaddy. Could have saved Lou Gaddy, who was the guy injured on the sidelines just a few plays ago. Glad to see he's back on the field and he's making plays. But big gain for DeMath on first down. Eight-yard pickup. That's the type of play you want to see when you're trying to run the clock out. And, and as you know, said, Remy Robinson chunks. That's what you want to see. And as you said, Remy Robinson, who they motioned back into the backfield, laid down a really nasty block to first Elijah Lee open. Gardner once again hands off. This time, no not blocking as that time. <laughs> Two guys on. What did you say their names were? The well, number five is not on the list, but Will Felder was also in on that no, tackle I mean, for what them. What is Roman Catholic's mascot? Oh, uh, the uh, what did I say? The Cahillites. I'm not even going to try. Anyway, nice play by them. <laughs> Blows up the play. And DeMatha now has to deal with the third and three at the 45-yard line. Clock is still ticking. We're about to approach four and a half minutes to go here. DeMatha obviously in not much of a hurry to run this next play. Cahillite sounds a lot like Hittite. I keep thinking of the Hittite Warrior, which is a pretty good book. Gardner that takes that very low snap. Somehow is able to get that ball handed off. Hard to say where the ball carrier was stopped. It looked a another, little bit short. Another player for Roman Catholic looked a little shaken up. He was rolling around over on the far side. He is back on his feet and walking it off. It was number 15, uh, Josiah Simmons. Called his name a couple of times tonight. So the ball made some nice plays. Spotted at the 43. Yeah, and they're going to bring Veyu in to punt it away. Try and pin them back. Make sure DeMath is winning the field position battle as the clock ticks inside of four minutes. So once again, the DeMath defense will be tasked with standing up here. And the punt unit will try to give them as much leeway as possible with good field position. Flag flies in back there around the 30-yard line. Not sure what happened here. DeMatha is moving backwards, so 
maybe a delay a game or something. Could be. This may have just been a decision to take down maximum time off the clock. Yeah, it makes sense. So that said, when you're at your 40, and we've seen how good of a leg Vayu has. He has a good leg, but I don't see him getting it much past the 20-yard line here. So a high short kick here. Ball bounces outside the 25, but takes a fantastic Ooh, yeah. to roll, and it's going to be downed just at the 10-yard line. Yeah, so I was ball. right that the ball wasn't quite going to make it to the 20, but took a big DeMatha bounce, yep, well bounced covered. the right way for DeMatha, rolled an extra 17 yards or so, and now Roman Catholic has a 90-yard field to drive to try to potentially steal this one here. It's a long field to go, but three minutes and 29 seconds is enough time if they can be efficient here. We haven't seen them break a lot of big plays. Most of their big plays have come in short bursts, one right after the other. But if you're DeMatha, you gotta be really aware and not allow guys to get behind you. And we've got our defensive backs a little far up for my liking. So Beals rolls to his left, he's looking down the field and he just decides to throw it at his receiver's feet there. Not yeah. a whole lot going there on that play. Yeah, Tayden Mines will get the target on that one, but he just had to turf that one. So that'll bring up second and 10, 323 to go. Roman Catholic has one timeout remaining, so if they're gonna get this done, it's probably gonna have to be on this drive. Yeah, I mean, if you, even if they have three straight incompletions and punt it away and we're still outside of three minutes to go, DeMatha can absolutely run off and get down inside of a minute left before they have to punt it back. And they'd be putting them right back in bad field position most likely. Yep. Fields takes the snap, looks to his right, throws back shoulder and that pass is complete for a first down. Great job by Trey Woodley to high point that pass and take it in, keep a foot in bounds. I think you got both feet in bounds along yep. the sideline. That is an NFL catch right there. Mm -hmm. Appreciate those. So that'll move the chains. That's the play that they kind of need though. Get out of bounds, pick up, you know, 15, 20 yards at a time. Yep, and DeMath is going to call a timeout here. That's, I uh, believe, their second of the half, so they should have one more. If they've got one more, each team has one timeout remaining. 3.17 to go. It's first and 10 at the 27-yard line for Roman Catholic. Yeah, I, I understand, in a sense, what DeMath is doing, bringing the defensive backs up a couple yards further than where they would normally line up. But in this particular situation, you're winning by more than a field goal. You need to protect against the touchdown. So, you know, you don't really care if they drive into field goal range. You just have to make sure they don't break that big play and get loose and get it to the end zone. Yeah, especially Because then the pressure's right back on you. I know that they, they would still have to hit that extra point, which, as you mentioned, no guarantee. They already uh, bounced one extra point off the upright. But th we also saw them make a field goal from roughly extra point range, so I'm also not going to say that there's a high likelihood that he misses it. Well, you also just want to win the game, too. Like You want to get this done right now. Yeah. And, Corey, you mentioned the DBs cheating up a little bit. Well, we saw the only successful touchdown drive that Roman Catholic has had was when the middle of the field was vacated deep. So maybe be a little bit more wary of those plays over the middle. There's a nice catch and one tackle broken there. Yeah, Dante Jackson got a hand on him, but it looked like that was Cody Williams who had to come in and clean it up on that pass. Yeah, Tayden Mines yep. making his presence felt on this drive. He's been really good play. all game. Yep, he's been good in the special teams. He's been effective for their offense. Beals takes the snap, looks to his left, throws deep down the field. Triple coverage Triple there. Coverage, dangerous throw. On Tayden Mines. Deflected off somebody's hands. It looks like there's four DeMatha players over there. Yeah, one, one of them was way far yeah, away from the was, play. Yeah, Another was one was deeper, like yeah. closing on it. So it was more like double coverage, if I'm being honest, but still a dangerous throw. It looked like he was just targeting him from the snap. Uh, but I think that was number 14, Terry Dorsey, making a nice play on the ball that time. Four wide receivers on the field here for Roman Catholic. Beals takes the snap, looks to his right, fires back shoulder again, and it looks like another completion. Yeah, Trey Woodley with another. It's the second time they've gone to that on this drive to very good success. That'll move the chains one more time. First time Trey Woodley had to go up and high point the ball. This time he had to kind of sit down to yep. catch the ball. So that'll move Roman Catholic into DeMatha territory here. 
at the 48-yard line. Clock ticking under 230. Again, throwing over the middle. This is broken up or dropped. Couldn't tell. Doesn't matter. Incomplete. Second and ten coming up. 2:26 to go here in yeah. the fourth quarter. Jermaine Menace with a nice defensive play there to break up the pass. It looked like they were going for Luke Van Brill, the tight end, who's had a pretty solid game. He's gotten open in the seam a few times. Been a heavy target for their offense in the short game. Short middle of the field has been his bread and butter. A little bit of a late sub here for Roman Catholic, swapping out one of their receivers. Beals looks to his teammates, communicates with them. Stacks Faithful getting loud here in the stands. Beals looks to his right, scrambles. Hits his man in the flat, and that's another big play for Roman Catholic. Held it longer than he should have, but fortunately for Roman Catholic, that side of the field stayed wide open uh, for Deshaun Hopkins to get a lot of yards after the catch and continue moving this drive forward. Now inside the 40-yard line with over two minutes still on the game clock. Not... Once again, guess he must have run out of bounds. He did. Okay. Yeah. I missed. I missed the the end of the play. I guess. Beals throws it, kind of flicks the ball over to the left wow. pylon, and it's a touchdown for Roman Catholic. What a terrific just throw like to that. to Jaja Boyd. Just that like was that. just a great throw. Yes. And we are tied by Samaj here. Beals. Dematha had a couple opportunities with their offense on the field to. Maybe ice the game, couldn't get it done. And now Roman Catholic has a shot to take the lead with a couple minutes to go. You love when you have a quarterback like that. Like you said, just a flick of the wrist. Looked completely effortless, and yet he threw his receiver open. Yep. He put the ball where he could run, catch it in stride as he was pulling away from the defender. So crucial PAT coming up here for Roman Catholic. Snaps a little high. We got a... Whistles on the field. Yeah, it looked like he might have Got missed some it. Laundry offsides is the call. <sighs> Didn't even need to be offsides. It looked yeah. like he might have missed that yeah, right. I thought he missed it wide right as well. I never saw the ball like disappear behind the goalpost. It looked like it crossed in front to me. It's a moot point now because Dematha was offsides. Once again, we will try this again for the lead here, Roman Catholic. Attempting a PAT. Dan and LaRusso. And, and another we've whistle. got more officiating going on. Not sure what this one's about. Looks like some conversation with. I think they're explaining the concept of the line of scrimmage to some <laughs> players down there. <laughs> kind of an important detail in a football game. <laughs> All right, so take three. Extra point for the lead. High snap once again, and it's it is blocked. blocked. And Dematha has an opportunity to scoop this. He's going to run He's away. He's going to take it all the way. Wait, there's whistles. They're, they're blowing it dead. I guess you can't return it for a point in, in high school football? Is that a rule? You can't do that? What? High school is dead, apparently. We got all excited for – Oh, my well, goodness. We were excited for the block anyway, but – I thought for sure. Yeah. Regardless, it keeps it a tie game, and which is Dematha huge for time. the Stags. Yep. Yep. And, you know, they, they scored so quickly that DeMatha has time to get down the field and try to at least get in the field goal range for a game winner. Yep. Wow. What a turn of events. It's been like that today. Kind of a back and forth affair. Roman Catholic takes the early three point lead. Fails to score a touchdown despite multiple red zone trips. Gets one called back. DeMatha quickly comes out, scores a touchdown. And then Roman Catholic answers with a touchdown. And then DeMatha scores a touchdown to take a six-point lead. And then after a couple of failed drives by DeMatha, Roman Catholic is able to drive down the field and score late, but misses their second extra point of the day, and that leaves the game tied. We will see what DeMatha's offense can do with 2.11 to go and only one timeout, but only needing a field goal to win the game here. The Mathis student section is fired up. They are on the move, and they're trying to get this team across the finish line and to 3-0 heading into week five next week. 
Big kickoff here. We've seen Dan LaRusso kick the ball short for most of the day. Generally has been unsuccessful, but on his last one, he kicked it to the point where DeMatha's up back was unable to field it. This time he kicks it a little bit deeper. All the way back to the seven, DeMatha bobbles the mishandle and ends up with a not so great return. Ball yeah. carrier finally taken down at the 20 yard line. Not what you want if you're DeMatha on that return, but obviously the most important detail, they did hold on to possession. Yes. And I was getting uh, worried about that, you yeah. know, especially when you see a guy who gets racked up like that and he's fighting for extra yardage, you worry that that ball might come out. Yeah, you know, you, you want to get down the field and score. But at the same time, you, you know, the number one priority here is you got to take care of the ball because if you turn it over in this field range, you're just giving the game to Roman yep. Catholic, putting them right in the, in the red zone, right in a position where they could be the one kicking the game-winning field goal if they don't punch it across pay dirt. You've got to, got to protect the ball at all costs. That's the priority, number one. If, if you have to, you can take your chances in overtime, but you definitely don't want to turn the ball over deep in your own territory here. Denzel Gardner drops back to throw, scrambles, got laundry on the field. I'm going to assume that's a hold against DeMatha. Yeah, it was definitely in the area of holding. It was thrown by the back judge, which suggests holding. It looks like uh, Mason Lindsay is not happy with the call. So, yes, definitely holding against the Stags so is going to be the call. That will spot the ball at the 10-yard line. DeMatha will have first and 20. Moving so, in the wrong direction here. So this hopeful game-winning drive here is off to an inauspicious start. With DeMatha. Both teams still have one timeout apiece. 150 and counting here for DeMatha. We'll see how aggressive they choose to be in the situation. And the answer looks like not very. A short gain, or not a gain at all. Loss on a handoff to Bud Coombs. That keeps the clock ticking. We'll see what Roman Catholic decides to do with their timeout if they decide to stop the clock. It's going to be really tough for them to have a whole lot of time left if DeMatha truly decides to play conservative and run this down. But it looks like they're... They also only have one timeout left, so let them run another play because sure. they're not going to run it all the way down. And if you ha let's see what they do here... Gardner completes the pass. I nice, might call the timeout nice now if I'm them. There, but not a whole lot of yardage gained. No, they're going to let it run, so we'll see. If, if they can stop them here, I imagine they have to call the timeout and try something. But sure. They're still operating under the assumption DeMatha is trying to score, but now third and medium, DeMatha really could just run the clock down as it's far third, as it can. It's third and 15. You know, like it's, or yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, third yeah, and 15. A long way to go yeah. and even longer to go if you want to score. So DeMatha seems intent on – not losing the game at this point, which is probably the right idea. Yep. Again, most important thing, holding on to the football, fourth down coming up. And, and yes, Roman Catholic looks like they did call their timeout. 29 seconds to go. The Matha will send the punt unit onto the field after a failed drive pretty much from the start with the holding penalty. So two touchdowns for DeMatha with a converted extra point as well as a con successful two-point conversion yep. a field goal and two touchdowns by Roman Catholic with one missed extra point and one blocked extra point that's how we got to 15-15 it's pretty interesting score not quite as bad as the Iowa Wisconsin game that ended 7-3 to with no touchdown scored Iowa won 7-3 to they had two safeties and a field goal it's an interesting so. feat it was a boring game. I would not <laughs> recommend watching a game like that. This game has had a little bit more juice than that, especially this in the been second a fun half. Game. Yeah. It's, you know, the first defensive half was a defensive was battle. And then it kind of opened up a little bit. That's yeah. like, to me, that's like the perfect football game is when you don't really know what's going to happen play to play because the defense was great early, and then both defenses got beat a couple of times. Yeah. So DeMatha will punt the ball away here. Again, no timeouts remaining for Roman Catholic when they do receive the ball, so we'll see what they're able to do. Mike Aveyu sends it away. Nice high, long punt, fair catch call for it. And, and it is Matha's ball. Matha picks it up at the 50. 
clearly DeMath the ball. Wow, what a turn for the Stags. Huge mistake by the punt returner for not poison pilling that ball, calling a fair catch, and it bounces back into his blocker, and DeMath is able to recover it right at the 50-yard line with 19 seconds to go and a timeout in their own back pocket. They have an opportunity to potentially score here before the end of the regulation. So Dante Jackson absolutely fired up heading back to the sideline. Huge play for the Stags. Huge mistake by Roman Catholic leads to a huge play for the Stags, and they have it right on midfield with 19 seconds and a timeout, as Eric said. So opportunity here, if they can pick up a couple of completions for 10 yards apiece, to maybe attempt a long field goal. Um, Veyu has been very effective this year as a kicker. Not sure what the top end on his range is, but we might find out shortly. Gardner drops back to pass, throws it downfield, and overthrows, looks like Cody Williams. No, that was number five, Emmanuel I'm Dyson, sorry, yeah, who Cody he was Williams targeting. Was the, yeah, yeah. And pretty good defense there by, I think that was number 12 for Roman Catholic, Ian Stead. So that was your shot play there to try to, you know, just get it done in one. But you got to figure with 12 seconds to go and still having a timeout, you can run plays over the middle here. Yeah. And the, maybe the, try the to only, pick up some yardage. Yeah, the only concern is that, you know, with you being this far back, it's not like Bayou has that great of a leg. He's accurate, but, you know, his range is still he's a high school kicker. Sure. So, you know, if you run it over the middle, you know, a little five-yard slant route, you might pick up some yards, but from here you're probably not getting into field goal range on that play. Well, how about 15 then? Why not? Throw over the middle and, ooh, ooh. a, a tough-looking slip. You worry about plays like that. Yeah. Blooms, looked like he blew a tire there. He seems to be okay. Yeah, he's, he's not limping or anything, which is good. Demantha and spikes the ball here. Do they not have a timeout? There's a timeout for them on the scoreboard. I'm not sure why they didn't just take their last timeout. I'm assuming that the scoreboard is correct here. Yeah, I'm not sure either. But at this point, you know, we're now just inside the 40-yard line, so they're going to have to take a deep throw to the end zone. Luke Casey, DeMathis offensive coordinator. So DeMatha has the ball at the 39-yard line. All right, what you got, DeMatha? We'll see what they can try to do here. Last play of regulation. Garner looking deep, throws it, and it is through the hands of Vinny Vincent Ordonez. Yeah, Vincent Ordonez couldn't quite hold on to it. It would have been a... A journey to try and get to the end zone from there anyway. And we're going to get some free football. And uh, our student workers are going to get some extra participation points tonight for sure for working this game. They have gone, even without overtime, they've gone above and beyond. It's 930. Usually these games are over around 9. What do they get for their participation points, Corey? Well, that's part of their grade for the class. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you, ha you have to work some games and get participation points. Plus you get points for just different assignments that we do. I wouldn't know anything about that. I don't go to school anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the grading in this particular class can be a little bit jarring for the students and the parents the first time they experience it because you basically start with a zero out of 100 at the start of the quarter, and you, you, know, you earn points as you do things for the class. That sounds pretty interesting. But it works out yeah. by the end of the quarter. Well, it, sure. it, it works out. As long as, as long as you participate. I feel like that's pretty motivational, though, right? Like you start at zero, you're like, well, I can't get a zero. You build your way up, and as the closer you get to the next letter grade, it's like, okay, let's let's pick it up. Let's, yeah. let's keep going. The big thing is just that it can be concerning early in the quarter when there haven't been as many opportunities to do things, and you're like, wait, why do I have enough? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I always try to make sure that I explain that very thoroughly at to least the students like, and to the parents. At least by progress report time. And to their coaches. You know. <laughs> Hopefully there's not a big fat F coming up. Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, we've only done half the stuff, so I've only got a 50. Yeah, I had coach, uh, the new Coach Jones come up to me about one of his vassal players who's in my class. He was like, I saw he has an F. Anything to that? I was like, no, nah, he's fine. <laughs> my parents would freak out if they saw that <laughs> on my report card under any circumstances. If I told well, them. And that, but that's the thing. Like, you know, when we were students, you couldn't just go up onto Veracross or any website and see what your, what your son's grade is at the beginning of the quarter. You had to wait until like that mid-quarter progress report. Yeah. 
And by that time, usually our guys are at least where they can have like a C like if, at minimum. If I told my parents that the F I got on my progress report was just a technicality and wasn't oh, they wouldn't believe it. Failing, I know they would know I'm lying because I lied about that <laughs> stuff all the time. So they wouldn't buy it. They'd think I'm I'm, I'm full of it. So. That's yeah. why I send out communications. I include it on you my on my back to school night yeah. uh, video. You yeah. know, I make, make sure that make, I explain make sure that. the parents hear it from you because yes. they're not going to believe it from high school kids because they shouldn't. Yeah, I have it in my course policy, so I, I tell my students, hey, if your parents don't come to back to school night, this is where they can find it, so they know you're not lying. So we are currently waiting for overtime action. I guess we're maybe Both having teams. A, remem a reminder of the rules at midfield, or yeah. maybe doing a. There's a coin toss involved here. Yeah, too. there's a coin toss involved, but both head coaches are out there, um, and along with both number ones, you've got Dante Jackson for the Stags and Samaj Beals for Roman Catholic. They're always on the field at the same time. Sorry, <laughs> always on the field at the same time. Dante Jackson. Had Really good defensive back for the Stags. And uh, Samaj Beals has been excellent at quarterback for Roman Catholic he's, today. He's, he's thrown some, some really nice really throws. Really nice throws. And he's he seems to have a command of that offense that yeah. they've run. Yeah, right. obviously, you know, a, a long lull in the middle of the game for their offense, you know, after a really strong first drive. And, you know, sporadically good plays throughout the first half, but nothing sustained really after the first drive. But in the second half, I mean, it's been lightning striking for both teams. Well, and to Roman Catholic's credit, they've had just such a struggle to run the ball. And so without that rushing element, it's been pretty much all on Beals to get it done. And he's he's gotten it done. Corey is giggling about something or smiling about something. Uh, I don't know what it's it a text is. that I got from somebody who's watching the game. Oh, okay. I appreciate it. <laughs> Was it something like, Corey, you're so much better than Eric? He's terrible. Yeah, that's exactly what they say. Nice. <laughs> I love that. I love to pick up my buddies. This is what I do. I'm the lightning rod. I take the heat. Everybody else benefits. Still having a lengthy discussion. Very lengthy discussion. Not oh, sure. we're, getting, we're getting a little antsy up here. I'm sure the players are getting antsy Here's on the, the sidelines. Here we go. see what the result of that was. So, so Roman Catholic wins the toss. Typically the strategy in overtime is to take the ball second because you have the opportunity to see what the opponent does on their drive and you know what you need to do to win the game or at least keep the game tied. Yep. Yeah, high school rules for overtime, more similar to college rules. Have Do you know if they've adopted the, after a couple of overtimes, they just do alternating two-point conversions? I'm. That's a good question. I don't know if I've ever actually watched a high school football game that went that deep into overtime to know for sure. So that's a, that's a good question. Hopefully that doesn't happen tonight. i like to get this over with as soon as possible. <laughs> We've still got to break down this equipment. i got to get back to school. Thank God. Our trip down to uh, to Richmond for cross country tomorrow. We don't leave until noon. If this was a 6 a.m. call tomorrow morning, like a lot what of our. What time's the race start if you don't have to it's, leave? It's an evening race. They run okay. under the lights. It's a relay event. I didn't know event. they did that. I didn't know they ran. Yeah, uh, we're doing uh, the RVA relays down just outside Richmond in Mechanicsville, Virginia. It's uh, under the lights. So they'll have a bunch of lights all over the course. Uh, have a, a glow run. So people run with uh, glow sticks. It's pretty good. So, De yeah. so Roman Catholic will start with the football at DeMathis 25, as usual. No time on the clock. It'll be first and 10. Now, in college, don't they play from the 20? No, 25. Are they remember for the 25, 25 as well? Okay. okay. And more discussions. I'm a little bit confused here. I guess, so if they won the toss and they chose to 
to play offense first, then I'm assuming that that means that a touchdown could actually be sudden death. I don't think I've ever heard that in high school, so I'm curious how this is going to turn out. Yeah, my understanding is that both teams are supposed to get an opportunity. It doesn't – I mean, I'm going to be real salty <laughs> if – they get the ball at the 25, and DeMatha doesn't get a chance. But defense needs to step up here regardless. Yeah. Fields takes the snap, looks to his left, rolls out, pressure already, and he takes a huge Woo! hit, underthrown ball out of bounds, and uh, lucky to get away with just the incompletion there after a huge collision. He got absolutely sandwiched between Emmett Laws and I think it was Blake Hauser there with him. I also saw Daniel Nelson, number 99, coming out of that group. So it was some combination of those three who just lit up Beals as he was releasing the ball. Beals still in the game, being a champion and a warrior out there, so. Takes the snap on second and 10. Looks over the middle, fires, and a great throw once again right on the money on that slant pattern in the he's, middle of the field. He's been heavily targeting his tight end, Luke Van Brill, all game. Yeah, that great. was a terrific catch. Yes, in traffic with hands in his face. Great throw and catch there to pick up a first down. Huge play because if that's not completed, it's third and 10. Instead, now it's first and 10. First and goal. First and goal, actually, yes. Or about the eight-yard line. Just inside the 10 here. Sends his running Fields back in motion. Again. Throws over the middle one more time. This time the pass is a little off target. Throws it behind yeah, the, his receiver. Yeah, the Same normally short-handed Van Brill couldn't quite pull that in. Again, a defender draped all over him. That pass a little bit lower than the first one. It's a little easier to pull in those contested catches when it's up and away from your body. Yep. You stick your hands up. When you have to go down, it's a lot easier for the defender to get his hand in there. But it's also typical to, at the front of the goal line, you want to throw low. So I understand yeah. the, the philosophy there as well. Oh, yeah, no, well. no doubt. Again, sending his running back in motion. Fields throws over again. And, oh, just <laughs> outside the reach of DeMatha's defensive back. And it's a touchdown. Uh, for Roman Catholic. That was Terry Dorsey again flashing underneath, but it was just a little too tall for him. Well placed for his tight end, Luke Van Brill. Huge game for number 13 for Roman Catholic. So we will see yet another PAT. This has been a bit of an adventure for Roman Catholic so far. And it this has could been. Be, this is an essential play. So LaRusso will attempt to even his record to 500 on extra points today. Oh, no, it'll be 33%. Oh, we oh. got a fake. Oh, oh wow. To Fates the, the defender line. out of his shoes. That was Jaw Jaw Boyd on there to hold the ball. And I'm not sure who the defender was on that play. Is that number 14 again? If so, that's Terry Dorsey, who just got absolutely juked, lost his footing. And that's an eight-point game now. DeMatha is going to have to go for two on the other end if, if they can get into the end zone. Definitely up against it as they get their opportunity to score. Uh, we will stay on this side of the field. Yep, they'll drive in the same direction. You got to keep everything even. There is a bit of a breeze out there today, so you want to make sure that, that uh, you know, you're know you not benefiting one team more than the other in that sense in overtime. So now DeMatha needs a touchdown and a two-point conversion just to keep the game going. All right. What you going to do, Denzel? Denzel drops back, fakes the handoff, rolls out to his right, looks towards the end zone, puts a move Woo. on, and takes the ball to the outside. Oh, he he's going all, all the way. way. The end zone for a touchdown. Is it a touchdown? I'm waiting, I'm waiting for the call. Touchdown yep. called on the field. Wow, Denzel Gardner, what a run. Explosive play by DeMatha's quarterback to get DeMatha within two. Now the tricky part, the two-point conversion. Yes, that's the big thing. Josiah Simmons had a, did a great job to get into the backfield there for Roman Catholic, but there was nobody covering the right side of the field. Denzel Gardner made them pay. He jukes the one defender out of his shoes who had a chance to stop him and then just turned on the Jets when he saw it. There was just a sliver along the sideline to get to that pylon. 
I was going to be upset if they didn't rule that a touchdown because <laughs> I had a perfect view of it, and I saw him get to the pile, and I'm like, that's a touchdown. All right, here we All go. Right, Two-point two conversion. We'll see what DeMatha has here. Gardner takes the snap, fakes the handoff, throws it, and it is That, that should be, yep, There's penalty flag, flag comes field. in way early. Ian Stead was way early making contact against Cody Williams. That was as blatant as it gets. Great call by the official there. And the official was all over it, and that will spot the ball at, I believe, the one-yard line. So opens up the playbook a little bit more for what DeMatha can do here. We'll see if maybe they go back to the old tush push. Yeah, and they're bringing in uh, Remy Robinson. Well, they were bringing in Remy Robinson, but it looks like we're going to get a timeout by DeMatha to talk this over. <laughs> Friday Night Lights. Yeah, I love it. This is one of the most exciting games that we've been able to call here on DM Stacks TV in a while. So we'll see what DeMath is able to cook up on their two point conversion attempt from the one yard line after the pass interference penalty. A pretty obvious penalty call. Glad the ref was all over it. Would have been disappointing for the game to end that way. Yeah, that would have been a really crummy way for the game to end. Be a crummy way for DeMatha, obviously, because they would take the loss. But honestly, I mean, if you're, you know, if you're a Roman Catholic fan, you know, you don't want to win that way. I don't think. You know, yeah, you you, you want to right prove now. that your team yeah. is better than DeMatha, and if that's how the game ends, then you cannot definitively say that your team is better than DeMatha. So we'll see if they can successfully defend this two-point conversion as DeMatha will take it from the one and a half yard line now. Gardner lined up in the shotgun. It's a quarterback run right up the gut and he is in for the conversion and that will tie the game up. And we will run it back one more time. I'd be curious if anybody who's watching on YouTube can go back about five seconds. I don't have access to instant replay up there, but it looks like our running back may have been moving just a little bit before the snap. I'm going to be honest. Like I say, I call it how I see it. Either way, it doesn't matter. It looks like Coombs might have been moving a little bit before the ball was snapped. Could have been a false start. Well, they didn't call it. So they didn't call it. play on. So... I'm sure somebody will text me if they go back and take a look. Somebody can tell me definitively. Uh, typically in college, and this is my frame of reference, the team that went second offensively then goes first. For the next the set of possessions, time. yes. I believe that's true, so we'll see if they do it the same way here looks in like high school. Offense is coming onto the field, yep. so it looks like that is the case. It's going to be interesting to see what their strategy is if they hit pay dirt on this drive, yeah. if they just take the PAT or if they try to cook up something to push to an eight-point lead. But And it is possible, to do before that. Going, going back to that two-point conversion, it is possible that just the way that uh, that Coombs stumbled out of his stance made it look like he false started to me. I'm not sure, but. Gardner looks deep, sees nothing that he likes. He takes off and runs, somehow slips out of a tackle. He didn't seem to really notice him, but he ran right by him, so maybe – Maybe he had him in his peripherals, but that was a really nice little run there. Yeah, Gardner again doing it himself. Gets up near the first down marker. It'll be a, a yard or two short, it looked like. No, they're, yeah, they're signaling uh, the move. The okay. Down, yep. Yeah. So DeMatha will have the ball at the 15 yard line, looking to score a second consecutive touchdown to give themselves the high ground in this overtime period. Two wide receivers lined up on the far side of the field. And a handoff up the middle. Big Ooh. hit levied. Yeah, that was a nice run, run by Coombs, I think that was. But then number 22, I think Lou Gaddy for Roman Catholic just stood there, didn't move at all, just knocked <laughs> Coombs right down around the five-yard line. But, again, that's enough for another first down. So DeMatha will now set up first and goal from the five. I have an opportunity to punch it in here. I'm keeping my head on a swivel for everything going around in, in the booth. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people moving field. around in the yeah. booth. Can we, like, pick, pick a level, either stay up or stay down? <laughs> 
This time, Ooh. blown up in the backfield. Tripped up by Jameer uh, Diabara. It was number nine, Jameer Diabara for the Roman Catholic with a nice tackle. So Coombs' momentum carried him back to the five, so it will be no gain on the play. Still second to goal from the five. Gardner lines up once again in the shotgun. Takes the snap. Throws it deep. It was under pressure. And that pass is broken up. Really dangerous throw into the corner of the end zone. Two defenders were there potentially. To and two receivers were there, which is not usually a good play call because if you have two receivers in an area that you're throwing the ball, it means you're automatically dragging at least two defenders into yeah, that you, spot. Yeah, you're playing 500 at that point. So. Yeah, so I, I, I don't like that play call. Um, you know, they've had some success moving Cody Williams, uh, you know, pre-snap and then sending him back outside, but you can't send two guys to that back pylon. Too dangerous. So third and goal from the five here. Gardner takes a snap direct, runs up the gut, and pushes his way it's down a, to the two-yard yeah, line. Yeah, it's a good push there by the Stags, but it's not going to be nearly enough to get him across the goal line. Got to figure this is time to go for it here. It looks like, no, they're sending Vayu out there. Okay. So DeMatha will try to kick a field goal. Yep. I mean, if you're Roman Catholic, you're wary that DeMatha could try and pull the same thing that you just pulled on that extra point attempt following your overtime touchdown where they were able to take that snap and run outside for the for the two-point conversion. So if you're Roman Catholic, you're prepared for that. I, I think DeMatha's going to kick this, I but you so got to be too. ready. Well, there's flags on the field. Delay of game was the call. That's not doing so yourselves any favors. Now you obviously have to kick it. Yeah. And yep. you've made it just a little bit more difficult. Now, I understand that DeMatha has seen Roman Catholics kicking game, and it hasn't been effective. So they know that it's touchdown or bust probably for Roman Catholic. So getting the three points on the board puts them in position where – they're basically in the same position as if they scored a touchdown, except you know, just they might lose this time. But you got to get it's the a little when you that's can. so not quite the same position. Then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, but like the kick is up and it is Looks no, no good. good. Wide right. So now Demathas defense will be up against the wall. Got to hold them out of the end zone and keep them off the scoreboard with a field goal attempt. Going to be tricky especially with the way Roman Catholic's offenses looked the last several drives. I kind of thought DeMatha kind of got away from what was working once they got inside the five. Like they were effectively running the ball, yeah. and they tried a couple of pass plays, didn't work. And it's just, just I, I don't know. I, I, I think that maybe they could have kept it going on the ground and maybe pushed it in for a touchdown. But Yeah. Uh, so a dangerous situation here so. for the Stags. We'll see what DeMatha can do here. The homer in me says, get a pick six and win the game. But Beals drops back to pass. He throws corner of the end zone, and that ball is, there's flags all over yeah, the place. Yeah, I think that's going to be a defensive holding. There was a lot of contact uh, pr even prior to the ball leaving the quarterback's hand. Yeah, I'm hoping it's just a hold because that's a five-yard mark off. But, um, It'll be half, uh, half the distance, I believe, if it is a pass interference. They and they are pass calling interference. pass interference. So that should put the ball at the 12-and-a-half-yard line. That looks to be exactly where they are spotting it. Yep. So time field running out here for DeMatha. They need to make a play if they want to sustain this game. Four wide receivers on the field spread out. Beals takes the snap, slips through, and he's taken down. The ball, the ball is out. out. And Roman They're going to recover. Looks like yep. they recovered yep. it, Roman they Catholic did recover, but they lost some yards. yards on the play. Kind of an awkward looking play there. We haven't seen Beals try to extend plays much today. And maybe that was a hint as to why, because 
He could have thrown the ball away. He tried to squeeze through a little hole there, and he ends up putting the ball on the turf. But luckily for him and for Roman Catholic, they're able to recover and still have a chance to close this out here. All right, Stags, so what are we going to do here? Be second and 16, so a pretty long way to go to pick up the first down for Roman Catholic. Beals takes the snap. Back shoulder again. Again, not the best throw this time. Something we haven't really seen from Beals. He's been more on the money with those back shoulder throws, but that one he leaves inside, and DeMatha is able to break it up. Haven't been able to call Jacob Wallace's name today, but the uh, junior cornerback with a really nice defensive play there. Perfect positioning. Wasn't quite ready for it to, to hit him right in the chest. Yeah. I don't think he was expecting the ball to be off target like that. Yeah, he was probably expecting to have to make a play on the outside throw when the ball came inside. But yep. he was where he needed to be, made that window really tight, and Beals just missed it that time. So a third and long for Roman Catholic and likely the outside of their kicker's uh, field goal range here. Beals takes the snap, throws it, and it is once again broken up. Eagle eyes are looking around for a laundry. There is none, nor should there be. That is number eight, Terrell Carey. Great play by the sophomore defensive back. I've got Darrell in a couple of my classes. He's actually in video broadcast journalism. I also have him for American literature. So it looks like they're going to bring on the kicker to try to get this done. You got to, right? Like you you got to try. Yeah, yeah, you have if to try. Cause you, if, if you it's, miss, it's, yeah. it resets. Right, exactly. If you exactly. don't pick up a fourth and 16, it resets. Exactly. You're probably more likely to kick the field goal. You just got to hope for no disasters, like blocked kicks or anything like that. But yep. Dan and LaRusso. To try to win the game. Snap is high. The kick is away, and it is no, no good. good. And we will continue action here at Marvin F. Wilson Stadium. Oh, my goodness. I don't think I'm making it to Hershey Park tomorrow because <laughs> we're going to be here all night. Oh, God, I hope not. Uh, I hope not, too. If you, Evan, if you're listening to that, I was kidding. I'm still going to be there. Uh, going to triple overtime now. Again, oh not gosh. sure how they do this in high school. Well, balls, yes, ball is being spotted at the three, so it seems like we will have okay. alternating right. two-point conversion attempts like they have – started to do recently in college all right i appreciate that hopefully that will get us out of here it doesn't guarantee anything <laughs> no it, it doesn't it probably it, speeds but it up hopefully it speeds it up a little bit so um yeah i was watching the bowl game it was lsu versus texas a&m where overtime took several hours because both teams just kept scoring touchdowns and that was you know the, the impetus to change the rule because it was just like you can't have football players playing for seven straight hours but uh, it was quite a sight. I want to express some appreciation again for our student workers, working the camera, working the switchboard, working the uh, everything that we got going on here. It's a late night for them. Cash those points, fellas. Yes. Take them to the bank. All right, so St. Michael, or St. Michael, that was two weeks ago. My that goodness. was two weeks ago. Roman Catholic. This game hasn't been going on that long, Eric. <laughs> Could have run it back to a rematch for them next year. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so Roman Catholic will get first possession here. Now, oh my goodness! So was that not enough time to talk it over? <laughs> so not a whole lot of opportunities for chicanery or trickeration or deception or anything here. It's just you run two point conversions. You're, there's no yeah, fake. You, you got you got to get it in the point. end zone. You got to so get it in the end zone. Bring your best play and. See what happens and may the best team win here. So, an absolute slobber knocker here. Yep. Down there, I can see uh, Coach OC is already breaking down the net because the kickers are no longer a part of this game. No need to practice your kicks anymore. And the chain gang can go away too. Yeah. They don't need to be out there. Yep. They're packing it up. I like to see that. Okay. Here we go. Interesting looking set they've got here out of the timeout. In the third quarter, 
One of the assistant coaches for Roman Catholic went out there to pull the head coach back off the field before oh, he got the caught. Oh, the snap is on the turf, and that extra point or PA or PAT two point conversion will not be good because kind of hard to do that when you had to fall on it. All right, here's the opening for Dematha. As Dematha has an opportunity to put this game away, got to run your best short yardage here. play here if you're the Stags. You got to get this one into the end zone. Let's end this game now. So the ball is spotted at the three-yard line. Twenty-three to twenty-three. Dematha with a chance to walk it off here with a two-point conversion. Gardner takes the snap, takes it up the middle himself, and he looks like I he's don't know short. if he got there. It's going to be close, and there's a flag out on the play. I see a flag at the official's feet coming in from the uh, from the near sideline. So we'll see what the penalty is. Definitely not giving him the goal line there, which I don't think they should. But we'll see what the penalty is. False start. Penalty is declined. Probably an illegal motion. A false start would normally just be a yep. know, no play. So yep. so that will be waved off. So back-to-back -back no unsuccessful two-point conversions, and we will try again. This time DeMatha, I believe, will have first crack at it. I kind of like the idea of using Gardner on the the keeper there. It's it's had some success. Yeah, you know, but they but haven't. It hasn't had as much success in those uh, design runs from the shotgun though. He's yeah. he's run that three or four times now tonight, and I maybe one of them was what I would define as a success. Well, and the one that really worked was when they were back at the twenty-five. There was more space, and he could kind of drop back and. Let but even but spread. but that's the thing. The one at the twenty-five was not a designed run. He was he was dropping back and then he just he found that opening. Mode, yeah. yeah. So Dematha will try to score on this play. This time coming out in the pistol formation, three wide receivers on the field. Gardner takes a snap, does a shovel pass again. That looked like it was snuffed out, but that is a big pile of people. And Near we're the end zone, but it looks like they're going to call him down and short. They rule him short. Yep. So now Roman Catholic will get a chance to walk it off with a two-point conversion. Seems like maybe DeMatha's kind of overusing some of those goal line plays, and you know they worked before, but they're getting snuffed out. Like that shovel pass worked already, but not a success this time, and Remy Robinson's kept short of the goal line. So DeMatha's defense, once again, will be tasked with preserving the game. They're getting a workout in, just running back and forth from the sidelines of the field. So Roman Catholic with another opportunity here. Crowd getting excited, trying to spur on this Stags defense, trying to keep this game alive for one more roundabout of this. Looks like a... Oh, the ball is out again. To Matt the recovers. recovers, which doesn't mean anything, but... It does mean that we will play on. So, uh, sorry. We're not going home yet, Corey. See, I, I don't care because I just showed up right when the game started and started calling it. Corey's been here all day probably, and he went to school. Isn't it worth it, though, if DeMatha wins? Maybe. Corey is hesitant to answer that question, which is – an indictment of him as a representative and Hall of Famer. <laughs> What's going on here, man? <laughs> I'm tired. Oh, I'm tired. All right, so now Roman Catholic will, after two straight fumbled snaps on these plays, will try to at least get the quarterback the ball. First step. Second step, get it across the goal line. We'll see what they can do. And their offense is coming onto the field now. Ball once again spotted at the three. It looks like they're coming out in a little bit more of their conventional sets, not the jumbo set that they had before. 
Fields takes the snap. He's got. He's under pressure. He throws the ball up, and there's flags on the field for probably a hold or a pass interference. And that's a shame because it'll Tamatha probably got be an illegal pressure. It'll probably be an illegal contact. I don't know if it was necessarily a holding, but the receiver got knocked to the turf. Yep, it's called a hold. Yeah. And so that'll be a half the distance infraction. So a little bit of an easier situation for Roman Catholic to be the first to score on a two-point conversion. We'll see what DeMatha has to offer here. Even further backed up. They've been able to make these plays all game. We'll see if they can pull it off one more time and give their team a chance to walk it off. Once again, Fields takes the snap. And the, the ball, ball is grasped, grasped one again. more time. And he is taken down. Just an unusual struggle to handle the snaps. Three out of four. Or actually they were so sure-handed throughout regulation. They didn't fumble the ball. They weren't, you know, there were a couple balls that were, like, close to being picked off, but they weren't intercepted. You know, they protected the ball pretty well in regulation, but in overtime, completely different story for Roman Catholic. I mean, all three of their attempts, right? They had one attempt that was no good but sustained by a penalty. But all three that counted, the quarterback fumbled the snap. It's just, it's hard to believe. And that fortune works in DeMatha's favor as they once again have a chance to put this game away. Four wide receivers on the field. Gardner surveys the line of scrimmage. He takes the snap, looks to his left, fires over the middle, and it is caught for the two-point conversion. Tamatha wins. Tamatha has won the football game, 25-23. What a game. Cody Williams on the reception. Corey, are you happy? I'm happy. Now let's wrap up the broadcast. We don't need to do a whole lot of post-game talking because it is late, but what a game for Tamatha. What a way to finish it off and to win it. And Thank you guys uh, for yes. tuning in. We will see you, Corey will see you next week, and I will see you whenever. Good night.